your husband had an affair with a woman? When you started sleeping with Earl, did you know he was married? I knew he was married. I'm in love with Earl. Now she has a child that she says you're a father. I don't think so. He said he can't have kids because he drank and smoke. Earl? sure that he's dead. I'm 100% sure he's the father. father. I'm hoping that I'm not. They were both too young to have sex. Tell it into the camera so every young person out there at 15 years old thinking about having sex. 15 and 16 years old is too young. Really, I mean, it just happened. So you only had sex with her one time? One time. Do you believe that uh, this young man is the father of your grandson? I do believe he is the father. My brother passed away seven months ago. A few months after he died, his ex-girlfriend Elizabeth had a baby. Could anyone else be the father? No. That baby does look like a Mexican. That's Jamie. You know that, Catherine. They don't want y'all making my son happy right now. You're saying that she you was cheating so. on your brother? She's a slut. What if this little boy is the only thing that you have left from your brother? Then I want to be in his life. When Andrea married Earl, she thought she had the man of her dreams. But then she started receiving messages and calls from a girl named Leticia, saying she was pregnant with Earl's baby. Oh. Earl says he doesn't think the child is his, but only the DNA test will tell for sure. Take a look. I have a two-week-old baby. I know it's Earl's baby, but he's married to another woman. Ever since we've been together, he's been lying to me. I didn't know he was separated from his wife, Andrea. He told me that they weren't together. It just pissed me off because he shouldn't have been back and forth between me and her. You know, he really don't know who he want to be with. I'm tired of it. I was in love with him, but I don't want nothing to deal with him anymore. I just want to prove that he's my baby's dad so he can own up. I don't like his wife at all. I hate her. She's harassed me on Facebook, talking about he don't want me. He just used me, and the baby ain't his. And when I read that, that kind of hurt my feelings. But he thinks it's funny, but it's not funny at all. He shouldn't have used me at all. He should have at least told me the truth. I'm dealing with this on my own, and it really hurts me, because I really was in love with this guy. He promised that he was going to be with me. And he promised me that he wasn't going to be with his wife anymore. I'm just hurtful right now because I have this child and I'm taking care of the child by myself. I need help. I can't do this alone. The baby needs a father. I want her to have a father in her life. Your husband had an affair with a woman? Yes. How did you find out? I found out from her. She, she, she told me on Facebook. She's... Um, which is how you want to find out if your husband's having an affair. Uh, you get a message from a woman. What did, exactly did she say? Well, she told me that um, she was having, that she was with him and she wanted to see was I still with him. And I told her, yeah, I, went, I am You're still married. with him. I'm married to him. I said, so what you mean? She was like, um, I was with him or whatever. I said, okay, well, he's right here with me. I said, you want to talk to him? And she didn't say nothing to him on the phone. When I put him on the phone, it like she had like she was shocked. Um, do you believe that her baby is your husband's? No. It's a little bit of possibility that it's there because he did have sex with her. Right. Well, that makes it a big possibility. Um, <laughs> how is this situation affecting your marriage? It affected it a lot. Like when she was pregnant, she was harassing me. She talking about some I was harassing her. She was harassing me. I had... <sighs> Over 29 private calls from her alone. She told me, um, B, this is a song that we play when we was together. And she was playing songs on the, and everything. I'm like, are you serious, girl? I said, what is wrong with you? You was in love with a married man. What about man? what she says on that uh, tape piece that he says he was going to leave you and be with her? He told me, I don't know nothing about that. He told me that he did not want to be with her that he wanted to be with me. Did he explain why he slept with her? No, he told me that he met her. Actually, he met her off Gmail. And <laughs> they told me that I had a Gmail account on my phone. And I said, I don't have a Gmail account on my phone. I called in and said, Earl I said, Earl 
I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, I know he ain't made no face, no Gmail off my phone. So they said that he did. And that's how he met her. And she said that's how they met and woo woo woo. But I'm like, you knew that he was married. So, but what is creating an e I mean, even if you create an uh, email account, you still have to do something to engage somebody else. Yeah. What did he do? He, he was talking. He found her, and he was talking to her, and she was talking to him back. She told him, he told her that he was married, and she still talks to him anyway. But isn't more of the responsibility his than hers? Yeah. And are you mad at him at all? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm actually mad at him. He already know I'm mad. We didn't argue about this plenty of times. Oh, I'm sure you have. The um, only reason why I'm so mad at her because she called me all type of names. And harassing you. And harassing me. Okay. Um, and that's fair. What will you do if he is the father of her child? Like, all of a sudden, you're married, your husband is having children with other women. That's not I don't know if I'm going to stay with him or not. I ain't going to be able to do it. Like right. I told him, because that's too much. Me and her don't get along. And you're hoping today that um, that that's not that's not his. Yes, and he said it's not because he said he can't have kids because he's drinking smoke. <laughs> that's why he can't have kids. I said that's the dumbest thing I ever seen in my I'd, life. Yeah, I've been known to uh, engage in a drink or two and smoke a cigar once in a while. And I had two. Um, <laughs> let's meet Leticia. Okay, when you started sleeping with Earl, did you know he was married? I knew he was married. He told me. That's why I said then. He told me. He didn't tell me that. He told me y'all wasn't the guy. He told you. He told you. Okay, he was what what up? Let's what see. Up? Okay, what up? What up? Um, he what did up? tell you he was married. Yes, he did. And you were still sleeping with him. And why? Why is that? I'm in love with Earl. Well, what made you? I want to. I don't care. Hold on. So how you in love with a married man? Um, why did you fall in love with Earl? Because he was a nice person. He was a nice guy. Could anybody else be the father of your child? It might be a possibility. There's a possibility that somebody else. Now she has a child and she says you're the father. I don't think so. Earl? Hey, what did I tell you? Are you sure that he's dead? I'm 100% sure he's the father. father. So you only had sex with her one time? One time. Do you believe that uh, this young man is the father of your Grandson. I do believe he is the father. Now she has a child and she says you're the father. I don't think so. Earl? Hey, what did I tell you? Are you are hoping today to show that Earl is the father? Yes. Okay, let's bring out Earl. Hey. <laughs> You told this girl you love her? Yeah. Why did you tell her that? I did love Letitia in the beginning. How did you know tell her when I'm here? Jenna. That you married to me. How did but you know her? Se we had separated, so I'll tell I love you. Jenna. So where did you what did I tell you? Uh, how you doing, Earl? Hello, Steve. Um, you know, you know, your wife's upset. She just ran off stage. See, she, uh, she um, blaming it all on me. You were separated when you started fooling around with Letitia? Yes. Um, and what did you separate with your wife over? She broke up with me. She broke up with, well, you're married. You can't really break well, up. Well, separated. She yeah. separated from Why me. Why did she separate from you? I have no idea. You, you just, she said, I want to separate. You said, okay. <laughs> you didn't tell yeah. me that. You told me y'all were together. We were separated. You didn't tell and you me have that. no you idea why you separated. No. Okay. Um, and then you meet her, and you you liked her, and you started sleep with her. Now she has a child, and she says you're a father. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have feelings for her? A little bit. What kind? You got feelings for her? Are you serious? Well, well, we we the feelings for her? How did you do that when I'm here? I don't have a 
this for this bitch. I'm still in love with him. Are you serious? Hey, hey, be quiet. How can you do that? Your wife is very upset. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, but I mean, maybe you want to comfort her. <laughs> she ain't gonna want to be bothering me right now. Well, it's probably hard for a woman to hear that her husband has feelings for another woman. But I only have a love feelings for her but right now. But you have some. Some, but not a whole lot. You should lot. have none. What you mean? You should have none for that trick. What I you mean? No, I ain't no trick, bitch. You 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 don't know me like that. Whatever. You, you only trick. Do you want to be the father of the baby? I do in a way, and then I don't. So, because in some way, you do. In some way, I do. In some way, I don't. And why do you hope that you are in a way? Did you tell her you can't have kids because you smoke yeah. a drink? Yeah. <laughs> Who do you want to be with? Andrea. Your, Your wife. wife. Your wife. And do you want to be the father? Yes. Okay. How the f*** want to be the... What the hell that might is be the this? First one. What type of you on? Earl, you're not the father. Thank you. That makes you still a hoe. Yeah, whatever, whatever. That's good. That's good. Um, that's good. Really. That's good. Really. Really. That's good. Really. Um, now you go find your real baby daddy. That's good. If, uh, thanks for being on the show. If there's somebody else you'd like to bring on and, and you know, if you want to clear up who the, p the paternity of your child, we'd love to have you back. Thanks you for being on the show. Like 10 people. Um, obviously, this probably helps to some degree, right? The one thing I am concerned about, there seems to be a lack of caring for you. Do you sense that? Mm-hmm. Are you going to... I'm not saying you're a bad guy. Maybe you're just not emotionally invested in her. Is that true? No. That's not true. No. You are emotionally invested in your wife. Yeah. Can you show some emotion right now? I don't even want it. <laughs> no. 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. No. You want to be like this all the way? Yeah. I don't want that. And if, and, if, and if you really want things to work with her, I think you need to show her a little more caring, and you need maybe not to sleep around with other women. Okay? Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Are you sure that he's dead? I'm 100% sure he's the father. So you only had sex with her one time? One time. They were both... Too young to have sex. It's all in it to the camera. So every young person out there at 15 years old thinking about having sex. 15 and 16 years old is too young. Brandon says four years ago he had sex with his friend Stephanie out of boredom. <laughs> they were both teenagers at the time. A year later, Stephanie gave birth to a baby boy. And she believes Brandon is the father. But Brandon claims... He didn't find out about the child until three years later. And he denies being the father. Stephanie and her mother want Brandon to step up and be a father. But first, he needs to know for sure. I've had sex many, many times. <laughs> but never really for the reason of boredom. Well, it just happened. It just happened. Like, I don't know what else How did it just happen? We was bored. <laughs> how like, old how how old were you at the time? I was 15. 15. Yes, sir. That's pretty young. It is. And after that what happened? Um after we had sex, I had So you only had sex with her one time? One time. You didn't start dating after that? No, sir. We were like really good friends. We went to high school together. So after the sex, you stayed friends. We stayed friends, but I And you never I, wanted to have sex again? I was I was already living in Florida. Oh, so you moved away. Right. Yeah, I went back to Florida, and I had got in trouble at the time, and I had got incarcerated for about two years. And when I came... As a teenager? Yes, sir. Before 17? 
I was 16 years so old. So what'd you go to like a juvenile uh I went to a center? juvenile level 10 program. Okay. And then when I got home, you know Facebook was the new thing. Facebook? Facebook. <laughs> Because when, when I was 15, it was more on the MySpace type thing. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so... What, what else, old timer? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I made that, my friends had got in contact with me, and so did she. On MySpace? R on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I have something important I want to talk to you about. And how many years later is this? This is... Two, two and a half years later. Two and a half years later. She contacts you on Facebook. And then I give her my phone number. She calls me and she wants to talk. And she's like, well, I have a child. And I think, I, I think you're the father. I know you're the father. And it was like, but you were with somebody at the time. She was. Yeah, she was dating somebody at the time that that happened. What is your thought when she says, hey, you have a son? Well, at the time, I was like, I was in a relationship. The whole time I was incarcerated, and she stayed with me the you whole time. You were in a relationship while you were incarcerated? Well, before, and then I got incarcerated, and okay. she stayed there the whole time. Oh, I thought well, there was somebody you met in there, but okay. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but I'm confused, that's all. So somebody you met, they stayed with you while you were incarcerated. Right. You got out. You're still in a relationship. Now uh, she calls you up and says, hey, you got a son. Now you're like, oh, my God, I got this new girl. Yeah, it, it ruined everything then, you know, just being released, it was like a new change for me, and I had changed myself, but I got a job, I got in school, I kept talking to her, I kept talking to her son, I was playing that father figure role of like, and then it got to the point where there was more feelings to me of the fact that like, I need to know, I can't just sit here and you tell me I'm the dad, but you were with somebody at the time. So you want to know if it's your son, right. now you're because now you're like that's you're getting feelings for him. Right, he's he's four years old, and that's like that's four years that I missed out on that I won't get Have back. Have you ever met him? No, sir. Just talking on the phone. I, I I've only talked to him on the phone. I've never seen him in person. When I went up there to see her and uh, even my family so this members. Is, this is a picture of the little boy. Yes, sir. So you've never met him? No, sir, not at all. Now you're 20 years old. Yes, sir. Would you be ready to be a father at 20? Right now, I mean, I'm not, but if I have to be, right. I will. And that's an honest I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to run from the fact of, you know, if I have a son. Because this, this is the thing. If she told me that, you know, right when I got out with the mindset of what I had and, you know, oh, well, I got a son, I could have just easily disappeared. You know what I'm saying? If she couldn't get in contact with me for two years, what makes you think, oh, you get in contact with me for 10 minutes? You think you can get in contact with me another 10 minutes when I was just gone for two years? Right. I could have just left, but I didn't. And what happens if it's not your son? If it's not my son, I'll be relieved because the fact that I didn't miss out on that time. And if I right. have a kid, I want to be there the whole time. So what are you hoping? That you are the father or you're not the father? I'm hoping that I'm not just because I'm not ready. I mean, I'm still in school and I'm, I'm still taking classes and doing stuff. So you're I need kind to... of mixed up. up the right. Now, I have to ask you. You're not bored right now, are you? No, sir. Okay. All right. Are Let's you bored? <laughs> no, I'm very excited. Um, <laughs> Let's bring out Stephanie. Four years. I have been a mom. I have been the mom. I have been a father. I've been playing the father role. I was locked you know up what? for two that years. That was your fault. Okay. That was your fault. But, but where were you at for the two years? You didn't get in contact with... With any of my family members, I didn't period. I know any of your family members. But if you found me on Facebook, why couldn't you find them? Because. Come on. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. If you could not, if you could find me you. after a you week know, of me being free. I don't know. I don't know your mom. But they got the same last name as me. They got the same last name as me. You could have um, just easily typed it up and I, just can seen. I ask, can I ask you a question? Why are you so mad at him? Because he has kept saying he's going to come up, come up, and come up and meet him and do a DNA test, and it's all empty promises. He comes up with every excuse in the book. Do you believe that uh, this young man is the father of your grandson? I do believe he is the father. Brandon? My brother passed away seven months ago. A few months after he died, his ex-girlfriend Elizabeth had a baby. Could anyone else be the father? No. Do you believe that uh, this young man is the father of your grandson? I do believe he is the father. Brandon?
Do you know how many times we have set up for you to come up to do the DNA test and you come up with an excuse? Well, but here, let's be fair. You slept with him when you were 15 years old. Yes, I did. Okay, not serious relationship at all. No, we were good friends. Out of boredom, right? <laughs> I had just broken up with, you know, right, my Right, but you said you were sitting around, you got bored, let's do it. It really, I mean, it just happened. Why well, It's not the... <laughs> A yeah. cute turn, it just happened. How come that never happens to me? It. I just I don't mean... happen to fall into sex. <laughs> I mean, I was attracted to him, yes. Right. I would hope so. I mean, I wanted it to happen, yes. Right. But at 15, probably shouldn't be... Should have waited. Shouldn't be having sex no. at 15. No. Because this is what happens. It could happen. Yes. And, and then you have one time. One time. And that's all it took. Now, okay. anybody else... Could, could the other guy that you just broke up with possibly to be the father? No, there's no but way. But you waited around for nine months did with you, him for on. him to play that Did you no. sleep with the other guy? Yes, I did. So but it's, there is a possibility. Th there could be a very slight possibility, but it was only a couple days after we had sex that, I, sex that I had morning sickness. And I didn't get back together with that guy until two weeks later. Oh, and, and then, then you, he, was he ever on the impression that he was the father? I, I guess. Well, yeah, okay. Yes. Exactly. That's uh, my point, man. Yeah, yeah. okay. But, so, but here, listen. Are you sure that he's the dad? I'm 100% sure. 100%. No. Okay. No, not uh, at all. Not at all. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> it's not happening. Your mom is here. Let's bring her up. Hi. Both of you, and you need to move away from her. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, sitting backstage listening to you, I hope you're not the father hey of this man, baby. Hey, man, how many times have I called that phone to talk to that child and you ain't let me? I how many times? I never answered the phone to talk to you. You lying because I called that phone. Oh, he's on a computer. Oh, well, can I talk to him? No, Stephanie's not here. You cannot talk to him. That's No, it's Because I've seen him on the phone with you. Yeah, when she's there, and she no, gives him the phone. she's not there. She, man, when, it has when, never been. It's family. never Mama, been a point Mama, where I've talked um, to him with 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 one of y'all without on. her. Okay, it's got to be tough having your 15 year old daughter get pregnant, right? Yes. It's not something that, as a parent, you would want. No, but it was accepted and dealt with. Right, you got no choice. Um, is she a good mom? She is. When and and again, she is. I think we all understand. How good can you be when okay. you're a teenager trying to finish school and everything else, That's right? That's it, exactly. And in a way too, too young to even know everything it entails. Let's forget about him for a second. Um, it's, 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 it takes a lot to be a parent. And at 15, you're just not equipped mentally, uh, you know, just all the things that you need life experience to... Hell, I was in my 30s when I had my first child, and I was scared to death. It's I was hard. 24 when I it's had hard. her, and I wasn't ready. He's probably not ready to handle that situation or even begin to deal with something like that, right? He just went through his, you know, involvement with the legal system, and he's, he has That's the fact that someone to just get out and try to step up. That's something you should have just respected, period. I never disrespected you. Okay. Okay, hold on. What do you want? Do you, um, and besides that you're, you know, you, maybe you don't like him or whatever, what do you hope It's happens? not that I okay. don't like what him. What do you hope happens today? Okay, first of all, I want to make the statement. They were both too young to have sex. Tell it to the camera. So every young person out there at 15 years old thinking about having sex. 15 and 16 years old is too young. And if you want to have a baby at that age, you need to stop and think that your life stops, that you stop living your life for you at that point. And it, you start living for your child. because he wants to know, hey, you know, I'm talking to the little boy. Never met him, but hey, I'm starting to develop feelings. He has every right to know because she was dating somebody else at the time. Am I the father? But he got incarcerated a month after I got back it together It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So he was not that there the whole pregnancy. With, but it doesn't but matter if they are there or not. Too. Okay. Do you believe that uh, this young man is the father of your grandson? Sam, nope. Nope. The, the my nope. grandson was a few months old when she finally confided in me that she had slept with him. 
the but one time. But do you time. believe he's the father? And the second I saw his picture, it all made sense. Okay. I do believe he is the father. Brandon, you're not the father. <laughs> We found out. I sat here and I played the role to be a father when I got out. I told you and I told you and I, I, I told you I wanted a DNA test. You kept saying you were 100% sure, but you're not 100% sure until you get the DNA test. And now that we're here and we found out, man, you cannot sit here and tell anybody that I have not tried to be there. Because I have. It doesn't matter. I never said it doesn't you matter. Okay. It, okay. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but this is a friendship, no. too. Okay. This is also a friendship. Are you still friends? Yes. I've known her for, for six, seven years now. All right. All right. That, okay, I'm not the father, but she's still my friend. Now, you, you kind of got something on your plate now. You got to track down this other guy. If you want to. No, I, mean, I don't. Uh, but you probably don't. But doesn't he, have a, uh, doesn't he have a right to know that he has a son in the world? No. He doesn't have the right to know? He was an awful person. That's why yeah, he's in jail. You, he was an awful person that you were sleeping with. Yeah, people changed because I changed also. I got back in school. I got my GED. You know when what? I that's was in there. that's your decision, though. Everybody um, changes. You came here because you thought that he was the father. He's not, but he's saying he's still going to be your friend. Is that correct? Yes, that, that's and correct. And she should know that. If I'm, she I'm, needs I'm some here. help, you'll, she can turn to you. Yes. You got your mom in your life. She's got her head on right. And you got a good friend in you that, you know, he's saying, hey, no matter what the outcome is, he's still going to be your friend. And that's, that's a good thing, right? Good luck to you. Thank you. Stay straight. Yes, sir. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you. It's all right. That baby does look like a Mexican. That's Jamie. You know that, Mexican. Catherine. Neither one of y'all are making my son happy right now. You're saying that she you was cheating so. on your brother? What? What if this little boy is the only thing that you have left in your brother. Then I want to be in it for all. James passed away seven months ago. And shortly after his death, his girlfriend Elizabeth gave birth to a baby boy. But James' family doesn't believe he is the father. And his sister Catherine says that James thought Elizabeth was cheating before he died. And he did not think the baby was his. Take a look. My brother passed away seven months ago. A few months after he died, his ex-girlfriend Elizabeth had a baby. Before he died, when he got mad, he'd say that he thought she cheated on him. I mean, he drove an 18 wheeler. He was never home. He didn't believe it was his. I'm here to see if this is my brother's child or not. I've seen pictures of the baby and it kind of looks like Jamie, but I'm not convinced that it's his until I know for sure. I haven't seen the baby because I'm scared to get attached. I don't want to get attached to something and then find out that she was cheating on my brother and it's not Jamie. I want the baby to be his because if it is his, then we have a piece of him here. I miss my brother. He was my best friend. I mean, he was there for me for everything. He wanted to be the dad. He loves kids. He hated that he had suspicions that he wasn't the dad. If the baby is Jamie's, then I do want to be a part of his life and Elizabeth's life. But he had doubts, so why wouldn't I? Oh, at first it was, oh, they know 100% it's Jamie's and everything. Catherine is the one that's starting that it's not his and they believe it. They have not, Jamie's mom and dad were at the hospital when I had Jamie. And Catherine has never laid eyes on my son. She's seen pictures, that's it. She's never laid eyes on him. She calls him a Mexican and everything else. That baby's not Mexican, you can clearly see that. How about your relationship with James, how was that? Me and Jamie got along great. We had our fights and arguments, what couple don't? How, how long were you with him? I was with him for 10 months. For 10 months. And how uh, soon after, when you were together, did you get, become pregnant? Uh, Jamie asked me to marry him in December, and I got pregnant February 1st. I found out I was pregnant. Um, and how old is your child now? He's three months old now. So he never met his child? No, he, he never. 
um, in May, Jamie's birthday was in May, in May, um, Jamie actually, we went to the hospital for my first ultrasound and Jamie got to hear his heartbeat. He said that was the best birthday present he ever had. That was his only child and he was excited. He was going to name him after his little brother that had passed away at three months old. Um, and how did James die? He drove an 18-wheeler. He was found hung in his truck. They ruled it as a suicide. It was not a condo, so there's no possible way that you can hang yourself in a truck that's not a condo. Um, and I'm sorry for your loss. Whatever um, the situation is there, it's, it's tough to lose somebody that you love. What did James, James's mother say the first time she saw the baby? She was at the hospital. Um, she came in as soon as I had him. She came in and she walked out and Jamie's daddy came in and Jamie's daddy held him and he said, he looked at me, started crying. He said, the hardest thing I've ever done is hold my son's baby knowing that he'll never hold him. And he knew instantly, he said that that was Jamie's baby. Well, Jamie's mama started talking and saying that it was not his baby because he has black hair. And, and James had what color hair? A dirty blonde. Dirty blonde. They started in as soon as he was born. Catherine wouldn't even come to the hospital. Nothing. And as soon as she found out he and had And Catherine hair, is his sister. His sister, Mary Catherine. Yes. And, what, and what do you think about her? She's a trifling whore. I just, just point blank. She sits here, and the only way she says that she's her brother's best friend, me and Jamie were together 10 months. We got her one time. The only other time she called, Jamie ignored her phone calls because she was calling for money. And I want to be sensitive with this question. Okay. Could anyone else be the father? No. They're going to get what they want. From and the you're saying case. that your son looks just like the father. He looks identical to him. Even his own family will tell you that. Um, so what are you hoping happens today? Listen, you suffered a loss. I hope they your, get their DNA your results. Your son lose, never going to get to meet his father. He'll never get to meet Tragic. his father. But as grandparents, his grandparents should step up and be there for their grandson, knowing that you know that's the only thing left of their son. But who knows if that's going to happen or not. We're going to bring out Catherine, who, uh, you know, you don't get on the best of terms with. I don't think very highly of her, but uh, let's bring her out. Okay. Not that's Jamie's like baby? Bitch, you know good no, well. No. That's Jamie's baby. baby. You, you know like that, Mexican. Catherine. You're just jealous Jamie because you can't have had a baby. Do you want a baby? Jamie didn't even talk to you. What if this little boy is the only thing that you have left from your brother? Then I want to be in his club. He's a beautiful little boy. Um, why do you doubt that that's not your brother's? The baby has black hair. Has hair from its neck to its lower back. I'm sorry, most white men do not have black hair from their neck to their back. But you're judging a baby on, on, on hair follicles? What color is your I'm daddy's hair, I'm judging the baby by what color is your his mama, hair? too. And what is mama? And what, and what, and what is she? Yeah, his, his mama. mama. Okay. Just because you'll sleep with anything in state, area, really? anything, don't mean I will. You're saying that she you was cheating so? on your brother? Yeah. With who? I mean, do you know? Did you see her sleeping with anybody else? I know of two people that she could have been sleeping with. Well, oh, could really, have Catherine? or did. There's if a big you were leap. Two hours I'm away. I can't tell you that she did cheat on him. I'm not exactly. there. I'm not a fly on the but, wall. But why would you say that she possibly did cheat? Because she's a slut. You really. We're kind of just being mean to each other, right? No, that's being nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's really being, that's nice. being nice. What I'm saying is, what if this little boy is the only thing that you have left from your brother. Then I want to be in his class. But you know what? I want to be a part of his right? class. I have not seen this baby yet. You never held the baby, right? No. Is, I'm just curious, is the baby here? Yes, he's here. Okay. What if this comes back? And I'm only going to take it from this young woman's word that she was in love with the guy, she got pregnant, she loses him in tragic circumstances, and all she has now is this little guy. And really, if, that's, if she's telling the truth, then all you have of your brother is that little guy right there. 
I understand that. So all this uh, name calling, really kind of bad name calling too, by the way. I don't see how that that solves any problems. I don't know how that soothes the pain of losing a loved one. I, I would say, you know what? I, I don't like you, but you know what? You gave me something of my brother, and let's concentrate on that. I've asked him all and time. I will. They want you. I will. You will. I will do that. I will apologize to her for everything. If that turns out to be my brother's baby. And if the DNA says it's not your brother's baby, then? Then I'll hate her for the rest of her life. Okay. We're putting all of us okay. through this. Okay. okay. Let's bring out Betty. Elizabeth, I told you when we come down this. It wasn't about hate. You it wasn't about hate. I said. Oh, my, she told. Don't. That's what it's about. I said. Everything the day he was said. born. This ain't my and son. you always said it was, you would be there, but, too. No. I, you always said you would be there. Uh, and guess what? You didn't. The day you left the hospital was the last time I so saw you. So I'm going to what? Uh, I'm going to come where? To people's house that don't want me there? No. Why can't you pick up a phone and call? Uh, darling, how are you doing? I have all Something. the text messages. What I, we can focus on you a know. lot of if I mean, this... don't ask questions. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to ask a couple. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. Um... Again, sorry for the loss of your son. I can't imagine how horrific that no, must be. No, you can't. No, I can't. And I hope I never get to experience anything like that. The only good thing that may become of this tragedy, though, is that your son did have a child before he passed away. Right. Right. Which was what he wanted. Do you believe it's your grandson? Yes, sir, I do. You I do. I see Ray Sandwich. Yes, you, sir. You do, Steve. Yes, sir. This is for my did son you, to Did support your son ever baby. come to you and say, Mom... I doubt it. My this son came to me and her out of anger. Out of he anger, my son said that. Over things. a phone call, and I told him I was leaving because that. he was talking to his ex. I never said she cheated. Am I saying DNA because she's a trashy hoe? No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying DNA <laughs> right. for DNA, my, no, DNA for my ends son. the story. All I want is for that to be my son's baby. Okay. And I hope it works out for you. Betty, you are the grandmother. There's nothing no, you can do. Don't. I'm the only parent hey, that baby has right now. Listen, you're not. Neither one of y'all are making my son happy right now. And you should be the joy. Please, please. Have a baby. He knows don't. the baby. Don't. Y'all, please don't. There's, there's a, this is a moment you listen to mom. Let the mistakes be in the past. Let her go on to be an aunt in that child's life. Maybe, Let her go on to be a happy. grandmother. This is not about me nor you. This exactly. is about the This is that. about... This but you're going to have to grow up and be an adult. So are you. Okay. Is, is it the... That's the only thing that's is, is, is it all right if she goes back and holds her uh, nephew for the first time? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, God. Look at me. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I feel you. You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. And I found out she was pregnant after I left. Everybody was telling him that I was cheating. He has my big head, but he looks <laughs> just like him. And we gave a DNA test. I've never cheated on him. He's the only guy I've ever been with. If he's not my son, I'm leaving you. It's over. 
whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. The kid's not mine. Don't look like me. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. All you are is a liar, a cheater, a whore. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Yeah, with his dad. Now you took a DNA test. You look really nervous. And I have to ask, why are you crying? <laughs> Adam, Ryan, you... Willie left home and his girlfriend Veronica to go play football at college. Two months later, he finds out Veronica is pregnant. Now, Willie says there's no way he's the father. Take a look. I've been with Veronica for two years now. I left to go to school for football on a scholarship. And when I got there, a month later, she called and told me she was pregnant by me. So I came back in January and she had to found out that, that I was cheating on her, which I told her I was cheating. I, I found out later, six months later, that she was texting a guy on the phone. If you weren't doing nothing more than texting, why you couldn't tell me this? Why would she lie about something so little if she hadn't done anything else for so long? After that, when she got ready to have my, have my son, um, I was in the hospital with her, and I had told her I wanted a DNA test because I felt like she got pregnant while I was gone, it probably wasn't mine. So when I told her that, she gave me kicked out of the hospital with the nurses and the doctors coming to get me out the room because I wouldn't leave. That made me think even more that it wasn't my son because all I said was I wanted a DNA test. I think she cheated on me because she was trying to get back at me for cheating on her. I honestly don't think he's my son, but I still take care of him like he is because I love him. Man. Like, I don't have any other kids, and this is my only child. And if he's not mine, I can start my life on other places. I honestly want him to be my son, but if he's not, I'm out. Steve, since the first time I met him, like, I love this boy. Like, I've only been with him. He took my daughter as his own, because I have another kid, and he took her as his own. He's the only guy, yeah, I did get pissed off. Like, I, he cheated on me two times. And when I found out, yeah, I wanted to go cheat on him, but I couldn't do it. Like, I love him. Like, he's the only guy, like, why did I ever... He, why did he say he cheated on you? <laughs> he said he cheated on me because everybody was telling him that I was cheating. And then he said he suspected I was out doing things, but all I was doing and, was... And you never cheated on him? No, I've never cheated on him. I've always been faithful to him. Yeah, I did go out and text somebody else, but I didn't do nothing with him. I was never why, with him. But why did you text somebody else? Because I got pissed, because he cheated on me, and I thought I could go out and go cheat on him and do it back to him, but I couldn't do it to him. He thinks, and this has got to be hard for him, the child might not be his. That's, that's got to be a tough thing, right? Yeah, like, it pisses me off every day he's accusing me. Like, he ended up throwing me and my, me and my kids out, like, three times. The last time he just kicked me out for good, he said he can't trust me. Like, he don't even leave me home by myself. Like, he always his, thinks I have everybody at the house. How long have uh, you guys been apart? Almost going on two months. Going on two months. And... Has he seen his son or allegedly Yeah, he son? still sees the kids. Like, he'll see him every now and then because my daughter asks for him all the time. So you're here today because you want to prove to him that you didn't cheat on him and that... That the baby's his, too. Tell me about what happened at the hospital when your son was born. Okay, we're sitting there, and he just kept staring at him and staring at him. I said, what's your problem? And he's like, he's like, I want a DNA test. And I said, are you serious? Are you really serious? And he's like, yeah. And I said, for what? You know this kid's yours. I've never once cheated on you. And he's like, well, he just don't look like me. And I got mad, and I had him kicked out of the hospital. He looks just like him. Like, he has my big head, but he looks <laughs> just like him. Is Willie a good father? Willie's a good father. Like, he's good to my kids. Like, no matter what, he's never treated uh, my daughter any different. Nothing he like treats her like it's like it's his, his own yeah. Right now, the relationship you guys are apart. Yeah, because he told me. But he so, what does Willie say? If you pass this, if the child's mine, we'll get back together. Yeah, he said then he'll start trusting me again and everything. But and you want to be with Willie? Yeah, I love him. I love him. I want to be with him. He's the only one I want to be with. Did you take a lie detector test? Yes, I oh, did. Oh, you did, and we gave a DNA test and mm -hmm. we totally verify whether Willie's the father to your son. All right, well, uh, let's bring out Willie. 
If he's not my son, I'm leaving you. It's over. Uh, whatever, Will. Really. You know I never never on you. You know you, I never you know the whole about it. time. No, you, you, went, you went over there and cheated on me. You went and cheated you on me. You six months. And, and you mean tell me that you are telling the truth? You ain't telling the truth. You ain't telling the truth. You ain't doing no blind. When these tests come out, watch. I, you owe me an apology. I apologize, but I know it ain't going to be right. You got said, oh, Pratt, after I left. It went, okay, we, it takes a whole left, month. You took the DNA test and it, me uh, uh, um, a fraternity test and you weren't even pregnant then. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's uh, junior college you're going through, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. I found out she was pregnant after I left. You took a DNA test. And the results are Willie. You're going to college just to play, play football. football. Right. I found out she was pregnant after I left. What position do you play? Defense end. Defensive end. You're yeah. a big dude, man. All right. Um, are you any good? Yeah. So, uh, like in high school, will you be? A, were you like a, a star? Yeah, 16 and, sacks. Whoa, pretty good. <laughs> so, I mean, I imagine being a football star that women like throw themselves at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and being a football star, you're not going to say no. No. <laughs> Come on. You got this beautiful woman here, right? Yeah. How long you been with her? Two years. Two years. Now, she says you cheated on her, right? Yeah, I told her. And why did you? Well, because you when, I, when, I, got, her, when I got ready to leave, the whole time from when I got ready to leave, she was arguing. I know you're going to go chill with some girls. I know you're going to be all on the girls. And, like, and you're going to college just to play co you're yeah, going to college going to go to school, and play, play football. football. Right. So I was like, when, when it happened, I just did it because I got tired of her always saying, I know what you're doing. You're saying she wore you down. Yeah. So you, had to, you had to sleep with them. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. And you know that's right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, He's, he's a college guy. You're a little bit older. Uh, maybe he, I think at college, you want your freedom, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you say that to her at least and say? I, I did. You did? Yeah. All right. I, but beyond that, do you love her? Yeah. Do you want to stay with her? Yeah. Like if she Are you going to cheat on her anymore? No. Okay. So let's get down to the fact. She had a little boy, beautiful little boy, right? Yeah. Do you want him to be your son? Yeah. She you named do. him after me. She, you named your son after him? Yeah. Okay. So you're Big Willie, he's Little Willie. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and you think he's not yours because why? Because I found out she was pregnant after I left. It was like September. Yeah, but couldn't you have got her pregnant and then you left? Hey, I'm pregnant? Nah, it was at the beginning of August when I left, like August 6th. So and in between out, then and before I left, we, she had just got a pregnancy test. But without any, you really have no, besides the texting, which she says she was mad at you, texting another guy. Um, but without any real proof, you don't know that she cheated on you, right? No. Why, why kick, you know, she's got a little girl that you're like dad too, right? Yeah. You kick her and the kids out of the house. What if the DNA test comes back and it's your son? I'm continuing to take care of her. Okay. Will you let her move back in? Yeah. Right. My dad been there all my life. Um, so you're hoping that she passes lie to talk to test. Mm -hmm. Now, did we give you one? Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> Thank God for that, right? Yeah, I admitted it, though. <laughs> yeah, you admitted it. All right, uh, Veronica, you came here because you, you love Willie. Yeah. You want him back. Your kids want you back. So let's hope you pass and DNS test comes back in your father. Let's hope that. Yeah. Um, since you have been with Willie, have you ever had sexual intercourse with any other men? You answered no, and the results for that is inconclusive. Um, no, that just means 
That just means it doesn't mean you, you're guilt, or, you know, you're telling the lie. It doesn't mean you're telling the truth. It just couldn't read conclusively what the answer is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say you're lying, but it doesn't say you're telling the truth. It's just inconclusive. We couldn't get yeah, but a read on it. Yeah, I'm lying. But let's exactly. read. That's a lie. Let's, let's read. No, that, that does not mean that. It's a lie. There's two more questions, Willie. While Willie went away to school last year, did you have sexual intercourse with any other men? She answered no. She told the truth. In the past six months, have you had sexual intercourse with any other men besides Willie? She answered no. She told the truth. So what I'm saying is, with the first one, Apparently she was with somebody doing somebody else. Not apparently. Apparently it wasn't, well, it wasn't able to it's get not, it. It's not apparently. It's inconclusive. Are you really going to let a word break the two of you up? Yeah, he will. No. Yeah. Let's, no. let's find out. Now, if I was quarterbacking right now and I was running around the stage, do you think you could catch me? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, too. All right. You took, uh, you took a DNA test. And the results are Willie. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when well, I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Uh, you took a DNA test. And the results are Willie. You are the father. Um, what do you want to say to Veronica? I'm sorry for saying I'm not the father. Sorry for asking for a DNA test. But at the same time, I know it's more to it. Before I left then, if it's inconclusive, like, it got to be more to it. Like, I'll take another one. Like, that doesn't listen, matter to listen. me. Listen, you're getting hung up on the wrong thing here. She passed the two other questions. This could be something that's years ago. Is that? It, but I'm saying, it, it's, but you know that for a fact that you're guilty. Yeah, I told her, though. Okay. No, she's... he didn't tell me until I checked the phone records. He would have okay. never told me. I don't understand. How long you've been together? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Do you love her? Yeah. She came here. She took the lie detector test. She didn't fail on any question, and she passed the other ones, and the baby's yours, and you don't seem happy. Yeah, I'm happy for that, but it got to be something else that's inconclusive. She, oh. she would have passed that one, too. She would have got that one, too. You see what I'm saying? Like, we really, years, she would have got that down, one, too. Sit down. Sit down. No, no, no. He... He didn't do anything wrong. No, hold on a second. I think part of the problem is, and, 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 and you're not wrong for feeling this way. I think you're a young guy who got involved with an older woman, and it was, it was a good thing for you for a while. But then when you went to college and you had your freedom, and I got to say, you know, you're playing college football and, and going to college, and being a young man, that has to be a very exciting time in your life. And that must open, you know, a lot of doors and windows to see different things that you weren't exposed to while you were in high school, right? Mm. And I got to imagine a young, good-looking guy like yourself wants to enjoy the things that come with being in college. But if you don't want to be in this adult relationship, because I don't believe you're just hung up on that one question. I don't think anybody's going to let a relationship of two years and a, and a child and, and you love this little girl, be hung up on that. But what I don't think, Will, you can't have both. You can't have this family that's going to make you feel good and Willie's the family man and then go back to college and enjoy all that too because it's not fair to her and it's not fair to those little kids. But what I think you do can make a choice is I'm going to be a good father but I'm not going to be in this relationship anymore. Or I'm going to be faithful to you, and I'm going to be in this relationship. But that's a choice you have to make. And either way you make it, as long as you're a good dad and you take care of your kids, 
then I don't think anybody would blame you for saying, hey, I'm, I'm young, I'm in college, I want my freedom. So I, I think you really, you have to make a decision. You serious, bro? Like, you seriously don't believe me? I've never once done anything to you, never cheated on you, never done anything to you. Are you seriously going to take that inconclusive as me cheating on you? All right, how long or me you doing you? something else? How long have you lied to me? Yeah, I lied to you, Will. If I was a lot of you for six months, seven months, and then come back saying... You probably would have, but I looked at the phone Willie, records. Willie, Willie, remember what we just talked about? I think that's... Forget about all the other things. Again, it's, it's not so much about her or what she did. Just, you weren't completely honest and trustworthy. But again, I, and I told him, I think this is more of a case of Willie deciding what he wants. Does he want to be in this relationship where he's tied down, he's committed to you with two children, or does he, well, he's got to be a father no matter what if you're going to be a stand-up guy. But I think he's a young guy going to college and wants to have fun. And, and before this, I asked him, like, he didn't have to be with me. Like, I told him before we even had my son. He didn't have to be with me. If he wants so you to go ask, out... You, you, I can ask him, but I think you should be. He's got he's to make a decision for you. Is it with you, or he's going to go and live the single life on Like, campus. this stuff needs to stop. Like, if you can't stop accusing me every day, then just go. Like, we don't have to be together. That's fine. Raise your kid. Like, I know you want to freaking be out and doing your own thing. Go ahead. Go do it. We don't have to be together. You want to go be a pro, whatever? Go be them. I don't care. Like, I'm tired of this just stop. Like, you need to stop accusing me. I didn't do anything with you. Do you want to be in a committed relationship or do you want your freedom? I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I really want to be with her so I can raise my son like I was raised. What do you, what do you want to do? I want to be with her so I can You want to be with her? Yeah, so I can Can you be myself. faithful to her? Yes. So when you're playing college football and you walk off to the field after a big game and all those hotties are out there, and they're like, Willie, Willie. She be right there with them. She's right there with them. Yeah. Give her a hug, man. So you're picking her. Yeah, she always at my game. All right. And so is this what you want? You want to stay with him? Yeah, I do, but he just needs to stop. Well, start. please let us know. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you because I want to follow what's happening with you. And I want to know if this stays together and if he truly stays by you or if he's not lured to all the candy on campus. <laughs> all right? Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Good luck to you. I hope it works out well for you. Hey, Willie, I'm Dan Rubikoff. I'm the polygraph examiner for the show. Yes, sir. So I want to explain to you guys about what inconclusive means in a polygraph. Inconclusive is neither pass nor fail. Inconclusive comes out when a person's reactions aren't consistent. Now, remember, the human body is different. Everybody's body is different. So to be fair in a polygraph, the person's results have to be very close to 100% being truthful or very close to 100% being deceptive before an examiner can call it truthful or deceptive. So in her reaction for that particular question, she comes up as inconclusive, meaning that I can't get her high enough towards one or the other to be able to call it fairly. So I hope that I've you know, helped to answer your questions with that. And, uh, you know, of course, you're a nice couple, and I wish you lots of good luck. Not really, you can still get cheated on them, but... Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I saw the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Now you took a DNA test. Adam, Ryan, you... Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Well, when I saw the birth certificate, I was drunk. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. 
When Adam's ex Heather gave birth to a baby boy, he was there to hold the newborn as any father would. Now, eight months later, he denies the child and says her other ex, Ryan, is the father. Heather is devastated, and both men took a DNA test to find out the truth. Heather, you called the show. Yes. Uh, a very convoluted story here. Yes, it is. Um, you were with uh, Ryan, the boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Yes, we were together about nine months, and I mean, we had ups and downs like everybody else did. It's just, he was away constantly. He wasn't there for me. And I met Adam, and he was there for me. He gave me the compassion that I hadn't had. And I ended up sleeping here with him, and I thought it would be a one-time thing. And... One time turned into... Yeah, to more, and then Ryan finds out from his now girlfriend that I had cheated on him. So you're really not sure who the father of your child is? Adam is the father. There's you... no doubt that Adam is the father. What happened with Adam? I had found out two weeks that after me and Ryan decided to work things out, yeah, that I was pregnant. Got sick, went to the doctors. And I was pregnant. Ryan was so happy. He's like, oh, I'm the father. He was so happy. And then two months passed by. There's no way I could be the father. He don't, you know, it doesn't add up. And then he leaves me after two months being pregnant. So from two months on, I was by myself. Every sonogram, every doctor's appointment, by myself. And then I feel you know, from a doctor's the conception date, and it turns out that the conception date was the time I was with Adam. So after time and time trying to find Adam to get to talk to him, I told him, look, you're the dad. No, 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 you got that wrong. It's not mine. No, no. So. So that wild, passionate love was already over. Yep. And why, why did that end? I don't know. You don't know. But you're not alone now. No. I'm married. Got married in May. No, April. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, and you married a guy other than Ryan or Adam? Yes. Okay. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Adam. Adam. He signed he the came, birth certificate. He came. He put his name. He held him. And then what's the problem? What happened? He said... My son started to change his looks. He didn't look like him no more. Oh, you got a cute little boy. <laughs> and, and how old is your little boy now? He's going to be eight months. He's going to be eight months. He's got, a, he's got a lot of hair for an eight-month-old. So you're married to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Ryan is now with another girl that you know, mm -hmm. right? She's actually my friend. She's your friend? Yeah. Who do you want to be the father of your Adam. child? You want Adam to mm -hmm. be the father. And what does your husband want? He wants Adam to either step up or sign his rights away. All right. So and he can no, adopt and him. And you're saying there's no chance Ryan could be the father. No chance. But there's Everything's a slight chance, right? Slight chance. Okay. Let's meet Adam. Just before. Here again, all you were is a booty call. Oh! I have no feelings for you. I don't want nothing to do with you. The kid's not mine. Don't look like me. You don't look like you. How can you sign the birth certificate? Because I was sneaking out while you were in the hospital and I was having sips of alcohol, so I wasn't... I away. was there. Awake, Adam. Yeah, I snuck out. Whenever I went out for a cigarette break, I was drinking on my cigarette break. So you're a deadbeat. If you want to call it that, the kid's not mine, though. You were with her, and you know she had a boyfriend, right? Yeah. And you slept with her? Yeah, she's a booty call. That's about all okay. I was. I was... Just when, but... Yeah, which was bad. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. Well, when I was on the birth certificate, I was drunk. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. Why did you put your name on the birth certificate? Because I wasn't thinking. I was under the influence. The whole, the whole time? 
Well, when I saw the birth certificate, I was drunk, honestly, and I That's didn't really pay excuse, attention. That's not Adam. I mean, you know what? That should be an offense, and they should lock you up for that. I mean, really. <laughs> You're not thinking about that kid. That kid's going to have to wonder, well, why did my dad sign the birth certificate if he didn't think that I was his kid? He's going to wonder what's wrong with him. I for you. I felt sorry for you because you had nobody. That's no excuse, Adam. You have a brain, don't you? You know what? She always seems to have somebody. It's not like she has nobody. Right. She's a whore. Of course she's going to have somebody. I'm a whore? I slept with you. That makes me a whore. No well, one you told you to sleep with me. This is a woman that at one time you thought you had a child with. You, say, you signed your name on a birth certificate. Now, think about that. You didn't sign your name to a car title, you know, to a, a lease. <laughs> You this is him. this is you signed your name on a certificate of a, of, of a human being saying you were the father, and then you come out and go, "Oh, you beauty girl," and I was drunk. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're not uh, I mean, does, you're not oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, listen? Is this an act right now, or is this really the way you feel? It's the way I feel. I'm just telling the truth. I'm here to get this over with. You're telling the truth, but you, you, you can do it without being so mean. And, hold on, hold on. And it could have been so bad because you were pursuing her. You laid down with her. You had sex with her. Yeah. The, point? the point is, it wasn't so bad at one time. All I was was just a fling with her. Felt sorry for her. You felt sorry for her. Yeah, she had You felt nothing. so sorry I'm going to take responsible for a child that I don't believe is mine. Yeah. Okay. Then not only are you mean, you're stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you took a DNA test, right? Yep. Do you know what a DNA test is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, and in all seriousness, I want you to answer it, okay? Yeah. Who is the Vice President of the United States? Obama. <laughs> Again, government's not my thing. You're close, very close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, you took the test. What if this little boy is your, is your child? Sign my rights over. I don't want nothing to do with her. So, anymore. hold on. Um, you're the man that you're married to now. Whoever's child it is, whether it's Ryan or it's Adam, he wants them to sign over their rights so he could be the adopted father. Yep. So you're saying, even if this is your own flesh and blood, you don't want nothing to do with it? Yeah. What you're saying is like punching me in the stomach right now. Because I would, I can't imagine my, because I think about my son, my children, every time I do the show, and thinking like my little boy being like, I don't want you. Man, it, it, it just, it tears me apart, man. That you, this, we're not talking about a dog or a cat. This is... Uh, uh, see this little boy here? If he's your son, you really wouldn't want anything to do with him? Nope. Uh, you, you hearing that, what's your fear? I mean, it hurts me, and I'm not even involved in this story. It hurts me, because he's missing out. He has an amazing little boy. He's smart, funny, always smiling. You, you, if he is your little boy, I'm just saying this, and if you do this and you sign him over, you will miss out on a lifetime of just pure happiness that you gave your son away. And mm -hmm. it might be one of those things that you regret for the rest of your life. So be it. Uh, Ryan's here, uh, the other potential father. Um, you cheated on him with this guy, which, wow. <laughs> this, I, I better see the biggest slug in the world walking through that door. Uh, let's bring out Ryan. Uh, 
All you are is a liar, a cheater, a whore. Hold on. You were, you were dating her. Um, were you happy when you were dating her? Yes, I was. Um, when you found out that she had cheated on you, what was your reaction? Um, that I was going to beat his face in. Okay. But that's over with now. You moved yep. on. You have a, a new girlfriend, right? Yeah. You like her? Yeah. Nice girl? Yeah. Now, you know, she had a little, uh, little boy. Yeah. Could that boy possibly be yours? No. It can't? No. No chance in hell. Were you having sex with her? Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Unprotected sex? We used condoms a couple times. A couple times. But yeah. sometimes you didn't. Yeah. And you understand biology, right? Yeah. Okay. So you know that there's a possibility, slim that it may be, that you could be the biological father of a yeah. child. Are you hoping that you're the father or you're, you're no. hoping that you're not? Yeah. And if this test comes back and you are the father... I'm going to take care of it. You are going to take care of it. You're raising this little boy now? Yes. And you don't care that she was with him or with him. You want the little boy. Yeah, I want him. You took a DNA test. Ryan. You're raising this little boy now? Yes. And you don't care that she was with him or with him. You want the little boy. Yeah, I want him. Now, she is currently married, and her husband is saying, whoever's the father, he wants them to sign over the rights. No. But you're saying if, you're, if this is your little boy, you're not signing rights away. No. You're going to take care of the little boy. Yeah. Good for you. Your girlfriend's name is Sarah. Let's bring Sarah out. You're lying. I was at the hospital, Adam, and you said that baby was yours. You bought Heather jewelry for having the baby, and now you're saying that you were drunk when you signed that birth certificate? Birth certificate? You're full of <laughs> And you, you can be a vindictive bitch and manipulative, and sometimes you, it feels to me like you're coming in between me and Ryan. Now, you guys are friends, though, right? We, we have a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Who do you think is the father? Adam. You think Adam's the father. <laughs> what, if, what if it is your boyfriend's? I don't know what will happen, because uh, it's that would be, be hard. I don't trust Heather and Ryan together. So, I'm married. I'm happily married. You might be happily married, but sometimes when you, do you say, think your remember boyfriend, when? Do you think your boyfriend would still sleep with her? I don't know. All right, let's meet your husband. What's your husband's name? Dave. Let's bring out Dave. <laughs> For one, Adam, you can go to the hospital and go in drunk. They'll kick you right out. You know no, that. Goes, man. I'm just taking a guess. You're kind of wasting your time talking to this one. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you stand by your wife? Um, you're raising this little boy now? Yes. And, and you don't care that she was with him or with him. You love her. This is your wife. You want the little boy. Yeah, I want him. I don't care if he was, she was with Ryan. I don't care if she yeah, was with Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's neither here nor there. But there's a little boy involved. And you're saying whoever the father is uh, biologically, you'd want them to sign over their rights so you could be <coughs> the adoptive father. Yeah. Ryan has said if he's the father, he wants to take care of it. It's his son. He wouldn't give it up. Um, this knucklehead over here said, eh, you know, I don't want to give it away. You know, let me move on. Ryan, if you are the father, I would like to have you sign your rights away. I'll still let you see him. It ain't happening. Oh, okay, this is Adams. In a way, I'm kind of hoping he's the father. Not for the little boy's sake, but just for the sake that you would get him. You know what I mean? Like he's willing to say he'll sign it, which would be good for you. Um, the DNA test for Adam. You're, like, sweating this out, too. But in all truthfulness, if he's not the father, that doesn't automate make you the father. Because, you know, you were having a good time. <laughs> she didn't say no. <laughs> and 
I have to ask, why are you crying? <laughs> All right. Adam, you are not the father. Oh! Oh, I knew it. Before you waste any air or time on my stage, get the hell off my stage. I swear to God, I just heard, thank God. It's like, whoo. He's like biting you. <laughs> the youth of America. Okay, you took a DNA test. Are you the father, Ryan? You look really nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan, you are the father. Um, your, your reaction to, I mean, do you have any other children? So this is your first child. Yeah. You, uh, I, I'm assuming for the whole time this little boy's been alive, you did not know you were a father. Right. If he says, hey, you know, you guys are married now and he's with her, what do you say about him helping with the child? As long as you don't disappoint that little boy. Because I don't want to have to have him come into his life and him leave. The good thing is, you really do know who the father of that child is. You can go change that birth certificate and get Knucklehead's name off of it. Um, <laughs> Now, what are you going to do? I don't know. It's, it's a big thing, right? <coughs> does it really change anything that the two of you have been? Yeah, it, it does. does. It does change. And why? Because he has a child or because he has a child with her? With her? With her. But she's your friend. Like I said, a love-hate relationship. All right. A little more hate right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just hope that you work it out. For the little boy, you got you got a beautiful looking son. Can he go back and see his son? If he wants to. If he wants to. Do you want to go see your son? Yeah. Okay, can we all go back? And there's gonna be no fighting or anything, right? All right, let's go see your son. I have a daughter who's three years old. My husband has been accused of being abusive towards his daughter who has cerebral palsy. She's absolutely terrified of him. I love my daughter. She has come back from his house twice with fingerprint bruises on her thighs. Did you abuse your daughter? Of course not. He was abusive to me the entire relationship that we were together. You hit her like you hit me and you're a coward. He told me if I left him, he'd kill me. Everything that this girl says is a lie. I'm you sorry. drink 18 cans of beer a day. That's not normal. And you both took lie detector tests, yes. right? How do you feel about his new wife? And she's lying for him. Because she provided us with an email that you sent her. You bitch. 
And wait till you see the tricks I have under my sleeve at the next court date. Is Frank, this another trick this? that's up your sleeve? Did he ever hit you? No. Did he ever abuse you? No. I'm shaking because you're lying. I'm shaking because I'm pissed off at you. You're a liar and you're an idiot. I hope he beats the out of you like he beat the out of me. Hold on. You're giving me a headache. Yeah, I am not even your daughter. And if I find out you put them bruises on her, you're a dead man. Some things start adding up and they don't add up right. Somebody's lying. And the results for Jim's lie detector test that he My husband has been accused of being abusive towards his daughter who has cerebral palsy. He's had his ex-girlfriend say that he abused her also. I haven't seen my daughter in the past two months over false accusations that my daughter's mother is making against me. Ever since I've moved on with my new wife and my new family, Christina is just completely jealous of, of what I have now. The fact that she can sit there and accuse me of physically abusing my daughter makes me sick to my stomach. She knows damn well that I would never put a hand on my daughter. Everything that this girl says is a lie. She has no proof to back any of this up. She's even gone as far as filing for an order of protection over a bruise that she found on my daughter's leg. The lies need to stop. The truth needs to come out. You can't get rid of me because I'll never give up on any of my kids. I love my daughter. I would do anything in the world for her, and I'm here to stay. My guest is Christina. And Christina, that's your ex and his girlfriend on the tape. You tell me what's going on. Um, well, the reason I wrote your show is I have a daughter who's three years old. She has cerebral palsy. Um, she has come back from his house twice with visitation with fingerprint bruises on her thighs. Um, I have continually had conversations with him about his neglect from Mallory. Um, he was abusive to me the entire relationship that we were together. Would pull my hair, burn me with cigarettes, spit in my face, lock me in the room. Um, he was abusive when I was pregnant, pushed me into a television belly first when I was pregnant. Um, when I finally did leave him, he had absolutely no contact with Mallory. He never called. He never sent an email or anything to check on her condition until we went to court. And ever since then, she's absolutely terrified of him. Okay, you described some pretty horrific abuse by this man that you, you were with and you have a child with. How long did that abuse go on for? The entire relationship. It started, um, we were together almost two years. Um, it started right around the when I found out I was pregnant, and it continued until I left. Okay, I'm just, I'm always frustrated when I hear the story, like, why would you stay with a guy who's rubbing cigarettes out on you or spitting in your face and throwing you down? Why, why would you stay one minute more with him? You know, I asked myself that a lot. A lot of it was, I was scared. He told me if I, if I left him, he'd kill me, he'd kill my family. He told me he would take my baby from me. I would never see her again. Um, and I was isolated. He isolated me. I had nobody to talk to. I, I wasn't allowed to have family over. Um, so I, I felt yeah, like I was trapped. That's what I'm saying. Like, if he's doing that to you, and wouldn't you say, this guy's a nut job? I need to, you know, I, I can't be with him? I should have. I, um, I really let him tear down my self-esteem to the point where I really thought that I maybe deserved it for a long time. It took me a long time to realize that, that he was wrong. Um, so, but you, you say that at some point you say enough is enough. Yeah, what it took was um, I had caught him cheating on me with his wife now. Um, I confronted him on the way home from visiting Mallory in the hospital. He punched me in the face, smashed my face into the window, and the whole ride home was, you know, continually cussing at me, threatening me, um, pulling, grabbing my hair. And after that, I said, you know what, I have to get out of here. He's going to kill me. And you, then you left him. Yeah, I didn't want my daughter to grow up and see that. So how long ago was that that you broke up with him? Um, we've been separated since 2007. Okay, so it was, it's been a couple of years now. Yes, yes. Um, before Mallory turned one, we separated right before her first birthday. All right. Now, so you have joint custody with your daughter. No, I have full custody. You have full custody. Full custody. But he gets, he gets to see his daughter. Yes, he's supposed to have visitation every other weekend. And so what happened? Um, well, when, when we first went to court, I did argue with the judge. Um, I didn't want him to have visitation unsupervised. So it started supervised. He did everything that the court said as far as, you know, coming 
on time, things of that nature. They really didn't make him do much. Um, then he started getting um, a couple hours a day, and then it went to overnights. When it started going to overnights, Mallory would come home and have nightmares. She's never had nightmares in her life. She, I would have to go in her room and wake her up from screaming nightmares, um, things of that nature. I never saw any bruises until August this, of this year. She came home with some fingerprint bruises on her upper right and lower, left thigh. Um, at that time, I, I called my attorney and said, you know, this is what's going on. Um, she said we would bring it up in the next court date. So you noticed bruising on your daughter and you called your attorney? Fingerprint bruises. I want to know where the bruises came from. Fingerprint yeah. bruises. Did you abuse your daughter? Of course not. Did you hit her like you hit me and you're a coward? Some things start adding up and they don't add up right. Somebody's lying. And the results for Jim's lie detector test is that he... So you noticed bruising on your daughter and you called your attorney? Mm hmm Yes. Did you take her to the doctor? Um, I didn't at that time just because I, I thought that maybe, um, Mallory does have spastic episodes where she kicks her legs with the cerebral palsy, so I thought maybe unintentionally they used a little too much force and they had realized it and it wasn't going to happen again. Um, and things with us were finally, we were all able to communicate, we were getting along for Mallory's sake, and I didn't want to falsely accuse him and then have everything being an uproar again. Things were finally calm. I thought Mallory was adjusting to the visitation finally. Um, and then he canceled for three weeks after that. He called and said, you know, I have to work. Our other child is sick. I can't come get her. When he did finally come get her three weeks later for his visitation, her reaction to him was awful. Um, she was grabbing me, pulling my hair, um, just looking at me like, Mommy, please don't make me go. She screamed the whole way to the car. At that point, I knew something was wrong. Mallory's a wonderful, loving child. She's not scared of anybody. Um, she has all kinds of therapists and doctors in and out all the time, new people. She was terrified of him. Um, at that point, I knew you know, something was wrong. So when she came home that Sunday from visitation, I immediately undressed her and checked her. And again, the bruises were there. Um, they were on just the left thigh this time, three fingerprint bruises. And I immediately put her in the car and took her to the police station. Um, they did contact DCFS. Um, DCFS did tell me, because Mallory is nonverbal, that it would be very difficult for them to find it founded. Um, it did end up coming back unfounded, and that's when I, you know, I called my attorney. I said, no, this is not good enough. Mallory can't talk. So that's when I wrote your show. So, so you called the police. They did an investigation. Um, yes. Do you think he's capable of doing this to his own child to be abusive? Yeah, I, I think he is. She's honestly. three years old. She can't walk. And he's, um, he's... Well, his, his problem is when he was abusive towards me, he has a, a severe drinking problem. Um, and I do, I do honestly believe that if he was hungover or tired or just not having a good day, that he would grab her and, and shake her or use force because he's never handled Mallory. Like, now, you know, he, he says that you did drugs throughout the pregnancy. Right, I know he says and that. that he, yes blames your daughter's condition on what you did during your pregnancy. Right. Is there any truth to that? Um, there is some truth to that. I did I did smoke pot in the very beginning of the first trimester um, before James and I had decided whether we were going to keep the baby or what we were going to do because I was you know, I was 19, unemployed. Um, he was unemployed at the time and you know, only 21 himself. Um, when I did decide I was going to keep the baby, I did. we did stop. It was close to the end of the first trimester. Um, I but even at 19, don't, I mean, isn't something going through your head saying, I'm pregnant. I shouldn't be doing drugs while I'm pregnant. Yeah, I've changed my life to be a better mother to her. Very I good. don't. I mean... And when when he's with her, when you've seen him, was was he ever a good father to her? Was he loving to her? No, he. I had to force um, any sort of connection between them. He would come home from work and go straight on the balcony, walk right past her, and she would look at him like, "Oh, it's my daddy. You know, my daddy's home." And he would just walk right past her. So he wouldn't show her any love. No, or... there was times that she was in the hospital, Steve, having surgeries done, all kinds of countless things. And he didn't even bother to come to the hospital. Or if he did come to the hospital, 
There was a time he walked out of the hospital and was drinking in his SUV in the parking lot while his daughter's in the hospital, and they didn't know if she was going to make it. And you also know that he claims that you're lying about the abuse, that he never he oh, was course. abusive of towards you. Yeah. Um, some, he claims that you're making up these accusations so you could like, kind of punish him by taking your daughter away from him. Is there maybe some bitterness on your part? Is there raw emotions where you say, you know what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna stick it to him. I'm gonna keep my, you know, our daughter away from him. No, you know what? I never would use my child as a pawn. I think every child has the right to know their father. Um, but if if I feel she's not safe with him, yes, I'm gonna keep her from him. And what do you want to happen today? I want to know where where those bruises came from, how they got there, and I don't I don't want him to have anything to do with her ever again if he put those bruises on her. <clears throat> Because she provided us with an email that you sent her, you bitch, and wait till you see the tricks I have under my sleeve at the next court date. Is Prank this another bruises. trick that's up your sleeve? Kara, you took a lie detector yes. test? Did you cause the bruises to Jim's daughter's thighs? And you answered no. And the results for Kara's lie detector test is that... Now, as a mother, you know, this is a man that you have a child with. It's, he's going to be in her life, you know, throughout her life if he wants to be, right? Right. And sometimes you've got to rise above the, the, the bitterness between you and his wife. Mm -hmm. Because she provided us with an email that you sent her, and it says, From you to her, you bitch, don't kid yourself. And please, next time you do go to court, at least make an attempt to look half as good as me. You embarrassed yourself with him. Wash your greasy hair. I'm not even going to say the next word because it's every woman's worst word. I know that you think your little comments piss me off, but I f feed off drama. I love to get under your skin. And wait till you see the tricks I have under my sleeve at the next court date. Ha ha. I will always win, bitch. That was a very long time ago, that email. That was in the, in the very beginning of, when, I, when he came back into Mallory's life, I, I mean, was... This, this doesn't really portray you in a really good light. No, you're right. It absolutely it does not. It absolutely does not. And at that time, I, I was very angry with her because she would go to court and she would lie for him. But she it would... almost sounds like you're telling them, I'm going to make up a story and I'm going to keep, you know, keep your child away from you. Know, you know, at, at that point, I, I was still very angry. Um, things between James and I had gotten better. We were communicating. I was actually giving him more visitation than he was court ordered allowed to have. We would have small talk and laugh about things, you know, stories of Do things that Mallory had done. No. I love him because he's the fa father of my daughter and I don't want to see anything bad happen to her because I don't want him because I don't want her to suffer. We I'm with a wonderful man who raises Mallory. He I'll loves see her with somebody now. Yes, and he loves Mallory and me very very much. Any possibility that maybe he put his bruises on your child's no. legs? No. She came back from him with those bruises. They were not there prior to her going there. I mean, Mallory is completely dependent. I have to change her diaper and everything I would have seen. How about, is it possible maybe that James didn't do it, that his new wife did it? Yeah, that is possible. All right, well, let's bring out, this is your ex-boyfriend? Yes, sir. Let's bring out Jim. Fingerprint bruises. I want to know where the bruises came fingerprint from. Fingerprint bruises. Yeah, fingerprint bruises. There's a doctor's report. It was report. a bruise the size of a no, dime on it was, the top no, of her leg. No, and no, yes, James. she is mobile. No, no, yes, she, she is mobile. Mobile, really? She yes, walks. She scoots around. She might not get around like any How other. How is a child like every other kid? on the floor you know going to get fingerprint bruises? Is this another bruises? trick that's up your sleeve? Yeah, James. Yeah, just yeah, like James. that email. You know what? Yeah, I'm an a damn good. Yeah, you're a good dad. You're a good dad. Yeah, I am a good dad. You don't allow me to be involved in her life. Why were you drinking in your SUV when your daughter was in the hospital? And they didn't know if she was going to make it. Why was I drinking? Why did you go Why a was year? I drinking? Why did that's you go you, a year you without me. calling? Why did you do drugs while you were pregnant? Why did you go a year Why without you calling your child? Why did you cause her to be how she is? Really? Really? That yes, shows that how your much. Fault. How do you look at yourself every day? That shows how much. How can you look at yourself? How you know yourself? about your you daughter's medical condition? You admit it to everybody that you, that you did Cerebral drugs while you were pregnant. Cerebral palsy is that caused by marijuana, Okay, James. okay. Are you a doctor? Now, she says... She makes some pretty, uh, pretty horrible accusations against yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. She Horrible. says you pushed her while she was pregnant into a TV, that you spit in her face. Spit in her face.
Did you spit in her face? No, I did not. You're did you push lie? you while she was pregnant? About everything? The only th I, I, everything. I'm not going to say that I'm the perfect person. We, we did get well, in, in some Well, let's just ask you. Did yeah. you push her while she was pregnant? No. Yes. Did you ever, did you ever mm. spit in her face? No. Did you ever burn, put cigarettes Absolutely on her? Absolutely not. I have a that's, scar that, that and a place that I can not show on that TV that. 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 that the producers have seen that from your cigarettes. That scar is from your friend. What, is it on your chest? From my friend? Is it on your yeah, chest? Yeah, my friend yeah, burns me with cigarettes, that. James. Okay, you're going to blame that so on you're me, saying, Are you bipolar? Is there something wrong with you? No, but, but from what you told me, seriously, from what this you told me, your wife's bipolar. That's what you told wrong. me. That's why you said you guys broke up Oh, here we go. Now you're jealous of my wife. I'm not jealous. She did me a favor by getting you out of Sorry, I have a normal life. You don't have a normal life. Sorry, yours is chaotic. Life, James, and you sorry. drink 18 cans of beer a day. That's not normal. The le the I'm home with our child. Of beer a day? I put her in bed at night. I take her to the doctor. I feed her. And I should be I allowed hope. to do that you stuff. You don't do it. I gave because you, you options. Because you interfere. No, 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 no. I gave you options of having private therapy sessions in your home so you could learn how to take care of your you child. Give and me you any refused. Medi medical information. You refused. You're a liar. You're a pathological liar. You're a liar. liar. You're and it's going to come out today. You need medicine. It's going to come out today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're both a liar. Why, you both took lie detector tests, yes, right? Yes, that's why, that's, that's why I'm here. Why is she so scared of you, okay, Jim? You'll see, you'll why see, are you the see. only person in this world she's scared of? Because you hit her like you hit me, and you're a coward. Yeah, I am losing your daughter. Brian, we gave you a lie detector test. And if I find out you put them bruises on her, you're a dead man. You're a liar and you're an idiot. I hope he beats the out of you like he beat the out of me. Hold on. You're giving me a headache. You don't act like a woman. Results of Christina's lie detector test. Did you abuse your daughter? Of course not. Did you put the bruises on her? Of course you not. You better hope you did. Is didn't. it is it possible that your wife did it? Absolutely not. Why why do you think she's saying because this? Because she wants to go to Florida with her new boyfriend, fiance, whatever she calls him, whatever she calls him. Mallory's father? Mallory's father. I'm her father. I'm really? not going anywhere. What have you done for her? Do you buy her clothes? What did you do for Christmas? You and your wife bought her an outfit from the damn thrift store. Do you recall when I brought brought the presents over on Christmas and there was tons of clothes? Oh, the dollar diapers store? and everything? And your and own from your mother? called me and said that I had to make sure that I ripped all the tags off of the clothes because Christina was trying to return them so she could have money to go out and party. Yeah, yeah, because I would return. Really? So you're stealing money. from your own really? child. That's why my child You're has... a whole life No, absolutely. I've given everything to my child. I've quit three jobs so no, I that's can take her yeah, to that's the all hospital. Say about that, I right? moved okay. an hour away from my family to get her into a good school district. What have you done? Yeah, have you, you followed me. I moved yeah, away from you and you moved five you. minutes away from me. Did you, move, you. did you move closer to him? You know, I did move to where we live now because it's a fantastic school district. If I'm such an abuser, why, why, would, she, why would she give me because I'm my daughter Brian more now. that I was legally entitled? Because You know what, Jim? Because I was trying to find I do find it odd that you would move closer to him. Close you to know the, what? To the My abuser, fiance the beast, lived you know? to the in violent... that town already. Okay. Yeah, but if he's so abusive and you're, so, you say he yourself, he had visitation anyways. It didn't matter you, what I did. You say you don't, the thing. Some things start adding up and they don't add up right. And like you said, I'm so scared of him. I'm so scared of him. I don't see you being scared of this guy. Somebody's, somebody's lying because, like, total opposite stories. How do you feel about your daughter? How do I feel about my daughter? I, yeah. I love her to death, you know? I, I, I would do anything for my daughter. Really? But dr and, quit drinking, right? But quit drinking. But you know quit what? drinking. You know what? When, when she was born, I was 21 years old. Like I said, I wasn't the I most was perfect 19. person in the world. I'm 22 now. That gives you the right. Yeah, so, so because I'm 22, I okay. should be out partying. So I had a couple beers, and, and, a you couple drop, beers and, and you and you dropped acid. Beers. You know what's 18 beers, and I didn't drop acid. Okay. At That's all you have on me, maybe. because I would have a couple beers after no, work. No, a couple beers is that a, I'm an alcoholic. You would come in the house with an open case of beer. You couldn't even wait to get home from downtown before you start drinking, Jim. Do you have a alcohol problem? Uh, you know what? When I was younger, I think I, I did drink. Oh, so yeah. she's, I think she's I, telling the truth about that. Uh, I, I drank a little too much. I think when I was younger. Yeah, 21. But you know what? When my when my daughter was born, and uh, you know, I, I completely straightened my act up. I you're a liar. I, I, you didn't even get you your relationship went back into the car to Christina, drink. Christina, what was your relationship like with Christina for two years? Um, uh, I I kind of got a feeling how it was, but I want to hear from you. 
Well, I would I would say that the uh, the first year was pretty good for the most part, and the the entire second year was pretty much this. Uh, why do you think what what changed all of a sudden? I got tired of getting my ass beat. She went to her different personality, you know, and then it wasn't the same person anymore. Yeah, you know what? I grew up and realized I had a child, and I wasn't gonna let you be out of me in front of her I anymore. I never once put my hand you on you. We'll find did. the truth out about it. Yeah, okay, we we'll will. We we'll will. You're out. right. Okay. We will. And you you believe that her doing drugs caused your daughter's disability? Absolutely. Well, I mean, why don't you do some I, research, I, I, honey? I, I, I tried confronting her, okay? When I, when I knew let's that... Bring out, let's bring out your wife now and find out what she has to, to say. Try to confront me? Try to confront me, really? Because you were smoking pot with me the first week mm. I was pregnant, sweetheart. Okay. So keep lying. Keep lying. Because it's all coming out. I have some nothing research. to hide. Do some research. Oh, hi. Smoking marijuana causes lack of oxygen. So when you want to sit there and say that an MRI shows that Mallory had lack of oxygen, remember, you smoked pot. It's an acquired brain injury, which oh, means it that happened it after birth. Sure. You, uh... You married Jim? Yes. I've known Jim for 12 years. I'm sorry. He's a good guy? Yes. I'm sorry. He, he ever hit you? No. He ever abused you? No. Spit in your face? No. Burn cigarettes? Why'd you leave him the first time then? You ever seen him do that to anybody time? else? No. Why'd you leave him the first time? I think someone's you talking. Then. Have some respect. I'm shaking because they're lying. I'm shaking because I'm pissed off at you. Son, look at yourself, honey. I didn't marry a man who abuses again, his child talking. and watches. Someone's talking. Let him use your son. Someone's Christine, talking. Let, let, I gave you a chance. Let's. I want to hear her. You see your husband interact, <laughs> interact with his daughter. How, how how good of a father is he? Loving. The guy can't get enough of her. His daughter crawls. When it's she, a little bit that, that I is do get. non-mobile. She can crawl into his lap and sit there and say, "Da." Duh. No, she can't talk. She can't really? talk. You, no. I wonder. So stop lying. Oh, well, yeah. I live with you her. You like trying to say that she was saying dad to Brian. No, you like no, sweetheart. One, right? She makes body noises. noises. She likes to sit there and, you know, crawl and go and, you know, be around them and stuff like that. They they enjoy each other. Then why to does she see someone scream? Who, who does have problems? You want to know why she screams? Yeah, I want to know why she screams. Hold on. Hold on. You're giving me a headache. You, your feelings about Mallory? I love her. You love her. I love her. I saw that girl when she was, it was probably in October, was the first time that I saw her. And you didn't abuse her? No, in you no didn't way whatsoever. I felt her. sorry for her. And so your take on the whole situation, why do you think that Christina is saying this? She's a selfish human being. She wants to have drama in her life, and she feeds off of that. It's obvious that she feeds off of it. You're a liar and you're an idiot. I hope what? he beats the hey. out of you hey. like he beat the hey. out of me. And the results for Jim's lie detector test is that he... And, but what, what would be the motivation for her to go lie on, and do on, this? The, the, she obviously wants to leave and go to Florida. I can go to Florida either way. There's call. No, you can't. Yes, there's no, call. Visitation he gets her Guess in the what? summer. You still have to take him to court for that. Oh, one. honey, we're working on it. We're not. I'm not, not going to be it? done. You're with working court on it until my parents' agreement was drawn up, and you can't seem to sign it. Right. You know why? Because it says on there that he gets to take her for two weeks in a row, and absolutely not after she comes home with bruises. You mean Am I going to let her leave for two row, weeks in like a row? Like a father should be able to do. He's it. not a father. Brian is up with her at night. How long Brian do you know goes Brian? to school? Ten months? Together a year. A year? Honey, no, a year. I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. Are, are, you, are you engaged to him? December, and now you're are you engaged? engaged to this guy? Where's the ring? Is he just your boyfriend? Oh, is that another lie? No. Where's Let's the bring ring? Brian on. Find out what he has to say. I'm a f***ing are you? No, no, no. He's raising your How are you daughter. Guys? I am Stop. raising your daughter. Back off. Because oh, yeah. I am raising your stupid daughter. Because you're this not. This is what happens. This is exactly what happens. I raised your daughter. Because, because, of because, because of this. She is my daughter. Because of this. You can kiss my ass, dude. Hmm. That is we'll not see, your we'll daughter. See. We'll see when these results come out. You, you, you're with Christina now, right? Absolutely. And your feelings towards her? Love her. All you my love heart. Her. Now, just being an outside observer here, they seem pretty rational, pretty level-headed, okay? And he is the father of this little girl. Why would you come on and say, no, I'm, I'm the dad? Because I'm the one that takes care of her. You know, I'm there in the middle of the night when he, she's crying and gets well, up. But, but they're, they're not together anymore. That's what Damn happens in relationships. Because of his ass. He still wants He's saying, I want to be a father. I want to provide, you know. We gave him that chance. She came back with bruises one time. We said, you know what? 
She's three. Mistakes. Do you think made. she was abused twice? Is do abuse. you think that Absolutely. you do you think that twice you, in a row? You look at these bruises and you say abuse. Absolutely. I'm with her all day, every day. We've never left any bruises on her. And she has her for a weekend. She comes back with bruises. Is it possible that the bruises she you know just rubbed on something or no there's no way that you could get fingerprint bruises yeah. on your inner thigh How even the doctor no that way. she went to said those are obvious fingerprint bruises where's Absolutely. the medical report on this he one? has the paper from the pediatrician so why don't you shut up before you sound even stupider like yourself oh like yourself yeah and you're supposed to be a cna no. and you don't know how to take care of a kid with cp you're an idiot how that's do why I you don't have a job how? how do i not know how apparently you don't because she came home with bruises and she's terrified Ryan, Let's see, but she's come to Hold us on. with scratches Kara, on her face Kara, fingernail Kara. all the way down bruising on her right, legs right. on her arms and we touch the okay. IV. Okay. she gets uh, IV, sweetheart she's sick is it, is it possible that oh, you sick. put the bruises on no, no. You, no, you won't do that. Yeah, absolutely. No, no way. And how long have you been with her? Uh, coming up on a year. Coming up on a year. Mm -hmm. And you're, you you want to be with her for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Like, you absolutely. love her. Absolutely. And you're gonna, you want to be in Mallory's life as a father and take care of her? Yes. And you're saying what? Like, I don't want this guy in my... If it comes out that these bruises are from either one of the two, I don't want them to have anything to do with it. And what if it comes out, they didn't do it? Did they come back, they passed they the lie detector test? They had to come from somewhere, Steve. Came from somewhere. Well, I'm agreeing with you. Exactly. I'm not, find I'm out. Hey, we're here to find out where the camera is. And I, I got to ask you, they both passed the lie detector test. What do you do? Uh, if they both pass the lie detector test, then I would assume that he, either they're leaving her with somebody else when she's in their care, or he really is that sick that he thinks it's okay because the bruises did not appear out of nowhere. This is not like, I, I'm you know, not this is not like. I don't think anybody's disputing no, the bruises. No, I mean, this right? is not like Mallory there. came home to me. I'm asking you, if they passed the lie detector test about abusing your daughter, what are you going to do? Then I'm going to ask him to do parenting classes and then hopefully they can have a relationship with his child. They, if I didn't want him to have a relationship with her, I would never have taken him to court. I would have taken off. He took me I, to court. No, he didn't take me to court you again. Yes, yeah, we're not I trying. Did. We're not trying to keep him out I, of the relationship. If he didn't do the abuse, we will not try and keep him but out. But this is what I mean with her. She there are oversteps bruises. her damn boundaries here. Okay, I mean, obviously, there's no dispute in the bruise. Everybody says thought it was. Yeah, let's hear that. Uh, That's what I want right there. Let's go. And so the, the only thing in dispute is whether this child was abused. Absolutely. And we're gonna we're gonna find that out now. <laughs> Brian, we gave you a lie detector test. You were asked, have you ever physically abused Christina's daughter? You answered no. You were asked, did you cause the bruises to Christina's daughter's thighs? You answered no. And the results of your lie detector test is that Brian told the truth. <laughs> Kara, you took a lie detector yes. test? And, and you're a nurse? I used to be a CNA. Did you ever physically abuse Jim's daughter? You answered no. Did you cause the bruises to Jim's daughter's thighs? And you answered no. And the results for Kara's lie detector test is that she told the truth. Okay. <laughs> Looking right through them. Okay. Jim. We'll, we'll see. Here it comes. You're up next, Jim. Here it comes. Jim was asked, did you ever physically abuse your daughter? He answered, no. Did you cause bruising on your daughter's thighs? He answered, no. Were you physically abusive to Christina during your relationship? And he answered, no. And the results for Jim's lie detector test is that he And the results for Jim's lie detector test is that he told the truth. What did I say? What did I say? Thank you. You are lying. And Brian, you. You. She needs, hey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after her. You didn't do it. You're a good, you're you a good guy. Hey, uh, we've said from the get-go. Mallory get -go. needs another guy. Absolutely, you didn't do it. Okay. 
We can you didn't both, do it. We can Absolutely. Both be okay, where did they come from? Can you please then explain? If you did, you know, you're missing, you're missing a real good moment now. She misses every good moment. No, We're I don't. Going I anywhere, want guys, them to right? get this. No, I, I want them to get it. along. If he, if it was an accident, that's fine. But I don't understand First of all, I where the say, bruises came I'm, from. I'm, I'm proud of you two guys to act like men and. Isn't that what's important here? I mean, you know what? To be honest, this doesn't make me feel any better because I know 100% that he hit me. So if he can pass and say that he didn't hit you, me, you, you, then you, I know for a fact. You think these things up, and you probably actually Jim, believe it. I never, you are I denying never beat you. the fact that you would slap you. me and pull my hair when I would block the door from you leaving because you wanted to drive <laughs> drunk. You're gonna deny that? Honestly, deny that. Hey, the results are out. I'm, I'm yeah, the I'm results clear. are out. It's a it doesn't hold up in court. When I came back here, he was a broken down man because of the abuse that you caused. You want to take everything that you do in your life and flip it around on him. You drink, you party, you sat there. You're going to say he doesn't you drink? Turned around. You're going to say you he doesn't drink? Around. No, he doesn't. You're a liar and you're an idiot. That's I hope what? he beats the out of you hey. like he beats why would you Why? say something like that? Because he deserves it. How many times have you been down 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 He's with me. From this, the get-go, it's is, been like this that. This is what we're talking Listen, about. Listen, the only one up here talking violence and craziness <laughs> is you. <laughs> You're a woman, and you're wishing another woman get her ass kicked by her maybe, husband? Maybe then she'll see I'm not lying. Maybe when he turns it around and does it to her, he told me himself the reason she left him the first time That's, to go to California you know what? was beauty. When to say something like that is pure craziness. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Upset. <laughs> you got to let some of this anger go. It's been, how can I let it go when my been daughter separated. is terrified of him, and he doesn't He's never come to any of her therapy sessions to learn how to take care of her. So if he didn't abuse her, then he doesn't know how to take care of her. How can I just let that go? She can't talk. I have to talk for her. Because she is terrified you stop, of him. You need to stop you know what? I, I, I just don't believe that a woman that was so physically abused would wish that on another woman. Yeah. <laughs> You don't Results act like a woman. of Christina's lie detector test. No, I act like a young lady. Did you cause the bruising on your daughter's upper thighs? You answered no. Did you smoke marijuana after your first trimester of pregnancy? You answered no. And these are questions that you wanted to know, and that's why we asked them. Besides marijuana, did you use any illegal drugs during your pregnancy? And you answered no. And the results for that, those answers are that Christina told the truth. Is the most important. Now, can you master. please? Christina apologize was also. To me. Christina was also asked. Not you, bitch. Was Jim? I just. I really. Yeah. No. I'm not going to. You're not. You're not putting yourself in the best light here. You were also asked on the lie detector test. Was Jim physically abusive toward you during your relationship? You answered yes. Did you fabricate the story of Jim physically abusing your daughter? You answered no. And the results of those answers are they. And the results of those answers are that you did not tell the truth. How could bruises Why? come from? Why would you lie? The hold on, hold on. I want to. I want to. I want to read this again. The doctors. I want to read. I want to read this again. Christina, you were asked, "Was Jim physically abusive toward you during your relationship?" You answered yes. Did you fabricate the story of Jim physically abusing your daughter? You answered no. And the results of those answers are that Christina did not tell the truth. He is abusive. He was abusive towards me. And I did not make those bruises up. There's doctor's notes upon doctor's notes that they were there. You have them. 
Did you fabricate the story? No, I didn't fabricate the story. All I said is that the bruises were there. I'm glad that it didn't come out that he purposely did it because that what that shows to me is that he needs to go to her therapy sessions. He needs to properly learn how to handle her kicking and spactus episodes because we have never left bruises on her and she acts the same way for us as she does for him. What I want to know is why, if, if he didn't do it on, on purpose, great, thank you. I'm sorry I thought you did it on purpose. You can go ahead and do that all you want. I'm sorry I thought you did it on purpose. But you did abuse me. I don't care what the test says. You did abuse whoa, me. Whoa, language. Would you... I, I just feel great right now. I'm sorry. Would you, Two years of this. Would you be willing to admit that on some level you're just really angry at Jim? Yeah, I'm angry at him for not being a father. The point is, mm -hmm. the relationship is over. Right, And it is. the, the, the fact is, he, he's saying he's not a deadbeat dad. He wants to be involved. I don't sense that there's the need for all this anger on your part. And to, to send in the emails to her, you say that he doesn't want to be involved in daughter's life, that he's a terrible father. But he sends you an email, and he says, I noticed a small bruise on Mallory's thigh that was there, and we picked her up Friday. We sloughed it off as nothing, given how much... Mallory kicks, rolls, etc. I was appalled at the innuendo of abuse. I seriously thought you were past all this petty business of name calling, bullying, and harassment. It seems you are able to communicate and work together for Mallory's overall health, well being, and happiness. I'm trying my best to be cordial, if nothing else. At any rate, I was wondering if I could get the number to the therapist that would be doing Mallory's evaluation on September 16th. It is very important for me to be there, but if I'm in school that week, I'm not allowed to miss days. Can we please? reschedule for Mallory. Please keep me in the loop regarding the status of what the doctors all decide to do about Mallory's lack of weight gain and her iron issues. I'm more than happy to do when I'm able. Right. Now, she... Does that sound all, like a man that doesn't care about okay, his body? Okay, first of all, he did not write that. She wrote that. We actually, on all emails, we sit down together. We both, yeah, I type them so up. So you, yeah. we both do so you did it, but this is, you signed it because yes. you're trying to be cordial. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, I think you have some real anger issues. I do, because I've been, I've been taking care of Mallory for three years. He has never gone to any you're of the, therapy but you're, sessions. You're, you're, I know that, but he still has responsibilities. I'm more than happy to take he any of the weight off the He sounds like he wants to be right, involved. Right, right. He will on emails. And then when it comes down to it and we have therapy When you're going to attorneys scheduled. and lawyers instead of doctors about bruising and you're not even asking them if she did go to the doctor. But you said the first person I called was the attorney. But the fact of it is, <laughs> oh my God. is that you're the, you're the only one who failed the lie detector test up here, okay? You're the only one who failed. Everybody up here passed except for you. So you really need to stop pointing a finger at everybody else. You need to grow up. You really do. You have to grow up. You're not acting like a mother. How am I not acting like you know, a mother? You want to get up, you want to hang up on a couple little bruises on your daughter's leg? I'll go home and show you bruises all over my son. You don't He's take care of your son. Wow. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I should wow. take a lie detector test. I'm yeah. done. Wow. You really act I'm like a mother. I feel bitch. I yeah, feel sorry for your daughter. Oh, do you see? Did you just hear what she said to me? And I'm she and this, the same you're thing with the woman that's a liar, defense. and it is uh, almost a borderline psychopath from what the way she's watch acting yourself, up here. Steve. Watch no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm telling you this right now. She's not a happy person, and you know it. I don't have to tell you this. And you. By staying with her and she continues to act like this, keeps all this drama, you're not going to be a happy person. But for your daughter's sake, for your daughter's sake, I hope the hell you grow up. And you're here to tell me something about your brother, right? And what do you want to tell me? I wanted to tell you that my brother has been beating me since I was about five years old. And I really just don't like it. Your brother beats on you since you've been five years old. Why does, why does he do that to you? Just, you're you're going to be okay, honey, okay? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. So what's going on with your brother? <laughs> My brother has been getting mad, and he takes it out on me. 
What does he get mad about? He gets mad about stuff like he gets mad about his friends not coming over to the house and my mom, like, she grounds him and he gets mad for being grounded for doing bad things and then he takes it out on me. Is your mom around to stop him do <laughs> from doing that to you? Well, my mom always tells him to stop and she tells him not to hit me and to be nicer to me, but he never listens to her. And, is, and how, how often is your brother like this to you? Um, it used to be not very often, but now it's almost every day. He does this almost every day to you? <laughs> is, is your brother ever nice to you? <laughs> Once in a great while. And I can see this is really upsetting to you. Are you scared when you're at home? I'm scared to go to sleep at night because I'm scared he's going to come in my room and hit me. What, honey, what does he do to you? <laughs> he punches me and he slaps me and he says rude things to me. And... He called me the N-word. He called you the what word? The N-word. The N-word? <laughs> Why did he say that to you? I don't know. <laughs> and he said he wishes that I would die. <clears throat> it seems like he's been this way a long... If, you, if, if you're 11 and he's been this way since <clears throat> you were 5 years old, this has been going on a long time. Well, then we got to do something today to make sure that he stops doing this. <laughs> do you, when this is happening, do you ever stand up to him and say, stop doing this? I've tried to, but then he just keeps hitting me harder. And he says that there's nothing I can do to stop him from doing this. And, and, and you do go to your mom and tell her that this is going on? And, and she punishes him and stuff, but he never stops. He never stops even when your mom punishes him? Mm -hmm. when you When you think of your brother, what do you think of? I think of somebody that I can never look up to and that I'm never probably going to see him as an adult because he might be in jail or I'll never see him again because he might be in, like in prison for the rest of his life. And at 11 years old, you're thinking about your brother. And your brother is how old? 13. So you're pretty scared of your brother then? And you're scared to go to sleep at night because he might come in. And, it, it, does he ever come in and hit you while you were sleeping? And why would he do that? Because he said he hates my guts. Why? Why would he hate your guts? Why yeah. would he? Why would he hate his little sister? I don't know. And you're here today because you want him to change, or you want this to stop, obviously. And I don't want to see him go to prison. I, I don't want him to become this, like, murderous guy. I want to see him grow up and be good. Well, Anna, I'm, I'm going to meet your brother, and I, I want you to know that I'm going to promise to try to talk some sense to your brother so that he doesn't hit you anymore, that your brother doesn't scare you anymore, that you can go to bed and you don't have to be afraid anymore, okay? <laughs> so what I want to do is I'm going to have one of my police officers take you back to the green room and I'll talk to your brother, okay? okay. All right, Anna, you go with Officer Mike. Come on, baby.
Do me one favor, stand up. If your mother calls me, and I find out if you start putting your hands on your sister again, I will personally walk you into jewelry myself. All right, let's meet Anna's 13-year-old brother, Ray. Hell, Zach Rev. I hit her and slap her. Excuse me, young man. Excuse me. First what? of all, let me tell you something, okay? I will talk to you, and I will try to speak to you in a respectful manner. But you will watch your language on my stage, and you will show me. <laughs> And you will show me respect. Do you understand that? Sort of. Sort of? Do you want me to disrespect you? I don't really mind. You don't mind. And why is that? Because I don't care what people say about me. What did I tell you about using words like that? Don't use them. Don't use them. Okay? Whatever. I'm asking, not whatever. I don't like that word either. Now, I see a young girl, 11 years old, on my stage, crying. And it's bad enough that we get children on a show crying, people abusing them, people not treating them right, using physical force against children, mentally, physically, verbally abusing children. And what's really sad is when it comes from somebody that should be protecting them, loving them, doing everything they can for them. Your little sister, she's here crying because you're hitting her, beating her, saying some bad things to her. Hitting her and beating her? <clears throat> I don't think 11-year-old girl's coming on TV crying her eyes out because you're not doing those things. Dude, Do you I put your hands on her? Do you put yeah, your when hands I'm playing on? with her. When Dude, you're playing we, with we her? We always wrestle around. Sit down. Your little sister is talking about when she goes to bed at night, she's scared of you. She's scared that you're going to come into the room and that you're going to hit her. Well, it's funny considering I tell her goodnight every single night. So you're saying you're a good brother to her? Yeah, I haven't touched my sister in like eight months. I've, I've been nice to her. And before those eight months? I was a complete ass because I was, I was worked over on something. You were what? So I was like pissed off at something, can't recall what it was. You were mad about something? Yeah. What at 13 could you be so mad about that you would start hitting your sister? Do now remember? listen, when I first heard this story and I see the ages, I'm like, well, isn't that what brothers and sisters do? Get in fights, fight with each other. But now you're 13 years old, you're a teenager. And I would think that every instinct in your body would be to protect your little sister. If your little sister was walking home from school and somebody was pushing your sister down or hitting her, you would do something to protect her, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Okay. Dude, I only, um, I only call her names just to joke around. She knows that. She calls me names, I don't too. think she does know that. Were you watching backstage, your sister? <laughs> yeah, I was. Did, did that look like she understood what you were doing to her, hitting her, calling her names? Did, did it look like she understood? Well, not really. But Did it she, seem like she was in a loving relationship with her brother? Because I didn't get that impression. Now, I understand you're 13 years old. And at 13, maybe you're mad about something, but I don't understand what kind of pressures a 13-year-old has. It's been a long, long time since I've been 13. What does the 13-year-old life involve now? Nothing much. I just hang out with my friends, bike. Go to school? Every once in a while. Every once in a while? Now, how come you don't go to school every day? Well, I get extended. I get suspended. And why do you get suspended? Because I, te I treat teachers like crap. You, it says here you broke into an airport, destroyed cars and windows. Destroyed cars and windows, right? Pretty Ball much. Through, throw a rack through somebody's window. Is that fun? Sometimes. Sometimes? 
How about the guy that is making eight, nine, ten bucks an hour, then he goes to work and he's trying to make a living, and instead of taking that ten, eight dollars an hour or twelve bucks an hour, whatever he's making, instead of taking that money that he can use to feed his family, maybe pay a bill, buy his kids some shoes, take them to a movie. No, he's got to spend it on fixing a window that some jerky kid broke. It's not or my fix, problem. It's not your problem, right? You're right. It's not your problem. It's the guy that has to spend the money. It's the guy that has to go fix it. The guy has to go work three or four hours to do the damage that took you about three seconds to do. So what if he came out and found that jerky kid breaking into his car or breaking his window? And he said, you know what? I'm going to take three hours of frustration of when I have to go to work and grind it out. I'm going to take it out on you. And if he was beating you or doing something maybe you shouldn't be doing, would it just be his problem? No, it'd be mine too, but I don't it'd really care. It'd be your problem too, right? And you'd want the police to come, right? Stop it. You'd want the police to come stop from a grown man beating you, right? No. No? You just enjoy the beating, right? <laughs> I know people, so I don't care. It's real easy to sit on stage and say you don't care, and it's another end to be on the end of somebody whipping your ass. You know what you do in prison? You wouldn't last. You're going to end up getting hurt or killed. You know that little smirk you just gave me? That's the same one I'm going to give you when you shut the door. Nails and tires, that's always fun because maybe now the man or the woman is driving their kids and the tire blows out. Maybe they crash into a pole and their, their child gets injured or they get injured. Well, so maybe they can't even go to work anymore. That's, I can see where you would take enjoyment out of that. Vandalizes homes, the one place that people are supposed to feel safe in, that you can go home to and now you're vandalizing their home, that's, that's nice. You steal from cars, because you'll just take what you haven't earned. That's a good thing, right? Steal sometimes. From, sometimes. It's nice to steal. If you don't get caught. What's that? If you don't get caught. As long as you don't get caught, it's okay, right? Pretty much. You draw swastikas. Only in anger. Only in anger. Yells racial slurs at other black people. Do you? Yeah, I do. It's enjoyful. It's joyful. What, what, what do you call black people? What do you yell at them? Whatever comes to mind. Jigaboo, fat libs. Oh, that's great. That's great. We have a young man in this country, and you're calling people those names. What, um, what is your ancestry? Mostly Native American, but... Native American? White, like, little tiniest bit um, black, but oh well. So you're of African-American descent also? A little bit. A little bit. And then, I, I see, now I don't get that. You yourself are part African-American, and you call somebody the most derogatory name that you could possibly think of? What, what do you gain from that? What, what do you get out of that? satisfaction that they're going to go home unhappy. You call your own sister that word. Actually, no, I don't. I never have. I don't think your little sister's lying about that. Well, I, think I don't think is. an 11-year-old lies about being called the N-word. Especially from a man or a young child that says he uses it to call people so they go home unhappy. I think I'll take your sister's word on that one. And you, and you don't go to school. And Ray, at 13, what do you think is going to happen with your life? Don't know. I haven't decided yet. You haven't decided yet. You keep going on that road, it's going to be a man in a black robe deciding what your life's going to be like. <laughs> if you make it to see the man in a black robe, Honestly, that's the truth. Because all these things that you do, I mean, you're a kid. 
and kids sometimes do bad things and sometimes they break windows or sometimes they go and snap somebody's mirror off. But hopefully, it's like someday maybe you'll grow up and you'll see what it is to like to go earn a living and try to feed a family. And, and, and then realize you come out and you see somebody that vandalized the things that you work hard for. And now you've got to spend money trying to fix that. I mean, sometimes even at 13, you've got to think, what am I doing here? What, what, what you're doing, you're not even going to school. How far, how far do you possibly think that you're going to get in life not going to school? Mm, it doesn't really occur to me yet. I don't really care. You don't care now. You know why you don't care now? Because at 13, I'm, your mother goes out and makes you a nice bowl of soup, pours the water in for your hot cereal in the morning, and she provides the blanket that tucks you in at night. You don't care now because everything's provided for you. But someday, when you're doing all these things and you're a grown man in about five years, who's going to provide that for you? Myself. Yourself. And how are you going to provide that for yourself when you don't think you're going to be going to school? Well, there are other ways to make money. Yeah. Well, you could take care of yourself, get three squares a day, have a nice little cot to sleep in. <laughs> You might think, ah, Steve doesn't know what he's talking about. But I know somebody who's led your life. I could bring your future to you. His name is Gary. Remember when I had a bunch of people around the front of my house with baseball bats and knives and machetes looking for the kid that was yelling out racial slurs? The stealing, the vandalism, the calling people racial racial names. What gives you the right to do these things? The fact that I'm untouchable. What's that? It's the fact that I'm untouchable. You're untouchable, huh? <laughs> Perfect field shoot opportunity tonight here in Chicago. <laughs> Maybe we could drive over to Jackson and Cicero tonight. <laughs> You know, Harrison and Kedzie. Yeah. Warren and Western. Yeah. And let's see, when we're standing on, on those corners, I would like to see you use racial names like you use the N-word. I'd like to see you going around drawing swastikas. I'd enjoy to see you stealing from cars, vandalizing homes, putting nails in working man's tires, destroying cars and windows, and maybe then, when you're done with all that, if you manage to survive, we'd go over to O'Hare Airport and you could break into it. Because <laughs> you are untouchable. <laughs> Is there an invisible force field around you that I'm not seeing right now? Not that I'm aware of. No, not me either. How long do you think you would last? I don't really care at this point. Do you care about anything? Not really. No? So if your sister was over there with you and somebody grabbed her and was dragging her to an abandoned building, you wouldn't care about that? I would. You would? Why would you care about that? Because it's my sister. It's because it's your sister. What if they were dragging your mom into that building? I would do the same thing. You'd do the same thing. Let me ask you something, young man. What if it was my daughter being dragged into that building? Would you protect my daughter? Would you fight for my daughter? Possibly. Possibly? Or would you just let somebody take my little girl and drag her into an abandoned building? I don't really know. I don't know your daughter. You really don't know? I know if I saw your sister or mother being dragged in the building, I know I would do everything in my power to stop, and I've never met them. <laughs> if I saw you on the street catching a beating for breaking into somebody's car, unfortunately, I would stop that. I would stop somebody from hurting a 13-year-old. 
no matter what you did, I would stop it. Why are you acting this way? I don't know. Do you want to be this way, Ray? I don't know. Ray, I honestly... I, w I, want, I want to care about you. I want to. Sometimes I find it difficult because I go, what the hell? Why do I care? And it's just easy to get up and say, you know what, let's move on to the next story. But I say, no, let's, let's, let's try to help Ray. Let's see what's going on. What can we do to make Ray a productive part of society? What can we do... <laughs> What can we do to make Ray somebody that can walk down the street and we can say, hey, we can count on Ray. Ray's a good guy. Not, better watch out, here comes Ray. He's going to break your window, slash your tire, steal from you. <laughs> now, I'm honestly not trying to be a bad guy with you. I'd like, I, I would like to hear what's bothering you. Maybe I can help you, Ray. So why don't you tell me? Open up to me a little bit. Tell me what's going on, that you're doing all this. I'm good. You're not good, right? Because if you were good, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. You know that little smirk you just gave me? That's the same one I'm going to give you when you're shutting the door. It's probably hard to relate to me, right? Big, bald, white guy. <laughs> Doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Screw him, right? I don't know what I'm talking about. I never was you. Unfortunately, I've seen too many kids like you. And fortunately, I've seen some turn around and change their ways and made something out of their lives. Something. But you might think, ah, Steve doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. D didn't grow up like I did. Didn't go to jail. Didn't go to juvie. Didn't do any of those things. But I know somebody who's led your life, the exact life that you are leading. I, I can bring your future to you, which is really an amazing thing. And I'm going to let you meet your, your possible future if you don't change your ways, Ray. And his name is Gary. <laughs> Do me one favor, stand up. You used to be a racist yourself, right? Yes, I did. Take over. <clears throat> you think you're tough, man. I used to be the same way. Same exact way. I used to fight, call people names. As a, as a kid, going to juvie, no big deal, right? Stealing cars, breaking in mailboxes, and growing up, started getting into racism, calling people N-words. Slapping them because of color. Beating their ass. Just do whatever I did that I wanted to do. Then I started going to jail. Jail ain't fun. Going to prison. That ain't fun. You know what you do in prison? No. Nope. <clears throat> you survive. You fight for your life. That's all you do. Wake up in the middle of the night, think if you're going to get beat up, shanked, killed. All because. And you... You doing these swastikas and you're black. You know what you do in prison? You wouldn't last at all. You're gonna end up getting hurt or killed. Plain and simple. If you keep on acting like this. I used to walk with people, I have no idea who they are. Beat the shit out of them. Steal their cars. Hit cops. Do everything. Everything I could. You're growing up to that man. You don't want to go there. I'm telling you, you don't. Do you want that? You 
you're growing up to that, man. You don't want to go there. I'm telling you. Do you want that? Oh, not really. You know, in prison, when I was this way, I got beat up. I got stabbed. It's not fun. I've been in the hospital three times. Why? For calling people racist names. It's not worth your life. You got to start thinking about your life and your sister. You're going to end up getting really, really hurt if you don't change your ways. You wouldn't survive in prison. You would not. And he ain't lying. Because I'll tell you something, if I went to jail, I'd be like one of the smallest guys in there. Think about that. Think about how big this guy is. And I'm sure there's a lot bigger guys than him. And we all think we're tough. And we all think we're strong. We're going to stop this and stop that. When you go in there, you ain't stopping anything. I remember how, what was that thing? I'm untouchable? You're going to be like a Kleenex. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's all you get. You don't get no snacks, and you go back to your cell with another celly. That's all you got. That's all you have. Make one phone call a day. Sit down, always looking over your shoulder, making sure you're not gonna get stabbed or punched or killed. Always. I'm just telling you my life, man. You gotta start growing up sometime. Here's a guy that's been everything that you've been through. Everything that you've been through. And here he is trying, trying to save you, trying to help you. Honestly, I'm, Ray, I'm trying to get through to you. Honestly. I want to get through to you and say, Ray, go play baseball, go to school, enjoy your life. It's really simple. You might think it's complicated at 13, but it's not. But I'll tell you a little story. When I was a young policeman, a long time ago, and there was this young kid, maybe a year older than you. He was 14, because you're 13, right? Young kid, 14 years old, got out of my squad car, and I was walking on, eh, I think it was Washington and Kedzie Avenue. And this young 14-year-old kid came running to me like, like the boogeyman was chasing him. But what I didn't realize at the time when this young man was come racing at me was that he had been shot in the chest as a 14-year-old. And when he got to me, he fell right at my feet. And before I could even reach down to see if he was okay, he was dead. He was dead at 14 years old. And it turned out he was in a gang, and he was messing with the wrong people, and he said the wrong thing to somebody, and they shot him in the chest. And I always wondered, what was he thinking when he saw me running to me? Did he think that I could change everything for him? Did he think that maybe this policeman could turn back time, take this bullet out of me? Is he going to save me? But I couldn't. And 20 years later, I still think about that, that boy. And I think, what would he be grown up to? How many things is he missing in his life? 20 Christmases, 20 birthdays, 20 Mother's Days. That kid's missing out on the biggest, best part of his life. And for what? To die on the street like a dog. And I'm sure if he could trade places with you right now and be 14 and 13 again and do his life over, I guarantee you he'd switch in a second. But you don't have to trade. You don't have to switch. You don't have to come running to me. You can change right now. You think you're going to change your life when you walk out of the studio a little bit, try to make some changes in your life? Possibly. Possibly. Anything that we say have any kind of effect on you whatsoever? No, not really. You know what? Kid ain't lying. I can't put a red ribbon on every little story that I do. I wish you would have listened to Gary a little more and listened to his experiences, what he went through. Because no matter what you say or how tough you think you are, the place that you're headed you will cry and cry and cry. 
and you will do anything you could to get out of that situation. I just want to bring your mother out really quick. I wasn't going to bring your mom out, but I want to bring your mom out. I want to hear what she has to say and feels about her own son. racial stuff that they've been talking about. Remember when I had a neighbor come tell me that I had a bunch of people around front of my house while I was at work with baseball bats and knives and machetes looking for the kid that was yelling out racial slurs in front of my house? You remember that? When was that? It's not only hurting you, it's hurting us too. Mom, Did you have Mom, I, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm scared. I really am because I always wonder how, how, does, how does he turn out this way? I don't know. You've been a good mother? I've tried. We've done counseling. We've done um, in-home counseling, um, out-of-home counseling, school counseling. He gets kicked out of school. He's constantly at home because he won't stay in school. He goes back for two or three days. I get a phone call again. Oh, Ray's kicked out of school again. I really don't know what to do. He's been to alternative school, and they... He hated it so bad there, he says, I'm never going back, never going back. Goes right back to regular school and starts over again. And what was your hope coming on to the show today? That somebody can tell me something. What am I doing wrong with this child? Are I don't you, know. Are you doing anything wrong? I don't believe so. I mean, I've even had parenting classes. I've done... Being angry, being mean to him, spanking him, being nice to him, Raised her. giving him... Food. Is your mother doing anything wrong as a mother? No. she a good woman? Yeah. Good mother? Sometimes. Sometimes? When is she not a good mother? Well, when she gets angry at me, she just blocks me out and doesn't even want to talk. That's what gets me angry and makes me do the crap that I do. Well, the way you talk, why would somebody want to keep talking to you? The way you're so disrespectful, the way you talk to your mother. I'm always disrespectful to her. You know what? You should never be disrespectful to your mother. <laughs> if there's somebody in your life that you should never be disrespectful to, I would think it would be your mother. Because if you'll be disrespectful to your mother, you'll be disrespectful to everybody. You're 13 years old, and you go, we'll go home with your mom now, and you'll go out there, and you keep acting the way you want to act, and you play this hardcore, cool, I'm so cool, I'm so hard game, and we'll do a follow-up story from you, and maybe I'll put a few dollars on your commissary card, <laughs> and we'll see how tough you are then. We'll see how tough when you walk in his shoes, the things that he went through, when some guy like me that's wearing a badge puts you away, then we'll see how tough you are then. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what I, I'm going to do. I, you know what, Ray? You go, you go out there. You go back on the streets. You do whatever you want to do, and I hope the police catch you before you do too much damage to some working man stuff. Or you hurt somebody with, you know, calling them the N-word. Because you keep throwing that word around, you're going to get what you coming to you real quick. <laughs> but one thing that I will get on an airplane, and I'll take care of myself, and I will show up at your door, is if your mother calls me, and I find out you start putting your hands on your sister again because that little scared girl, that's the thing I'm concerned about is your daughter, 11-year-old little girl scared. That I can't ignore. That I can't say, okay, you go and do that. No. You do that again, and I will personally walk you into juvie myself.
You know that little smirk you just gave me? You know that one little one that you just curled up in your lip? That's the same one I'm going to give you when they're shutting the door.